Well, good evening. It's seven o'clock and it is back to the Go Game Go channel. I am Viking Stew coming to you with an Elvis night. Now, are we shy one guest? That's a possibility. But what we do have is we got me and we got Jeff. <laughs> How's it going? Gino is going to be here. I'm not, uh, but I, I'm uh, trying to keep in touch with him. But we'll see what happens. We may do uh, do another Elvis night. Jeff and I might morph this into something else. That's a possibility. I thought um, you were having Elvis on the show tonight. Well, uh, you know. yeah, I, I, I couldn't find him. I went to Paris. I flew all the way to Paris to see if I could find him because that's where Morrison is. So I thought, well, what the heck? I'll just see if he's there too. Uh, no such luck. Of course, I don't believe in luck. Now, um, today I talked about, mm -hmm. I had a short little episode. We talked about Jeff LeVar. Mm -hmm. So for those of you just tuning in tonight, um, we lost Jeff LeVar yesterday. Uh, and as it says here, is gone too soon. I had a little bit of an elegy for him today. Uh, he was a really cool dude. Uh, here's these pictures again. I'll show them. This is, uh, there's me in the pictures too. But uh, this was a, a piece that I put together. And there's my, there's Christine and Jeff Labar together there. And me and Jeff hanging out there. And uh, there we are. Um, back in 89, I had the good fortune of interviewing um, Tom Kiefer uh, right down here in the bottom corner. Um, and uh, that led to me hanging out with Cinderella later that night. And then when they came here to St. Louis too, um, this is Jeff back in the day when I was meeting him. Um, this is back in the day when he was, uh, an endorser for Alvarez guitars when I worked for St. Louis music. So, uh, Jeff was a really, really cool, cool guy. If you want to check out something, I do believe this is probably still available. I did not get a chance to check that, uh, on Amazon today. That's where I bought it. Um, but, uh, this is from the heartbreak station, uh, tour. Um, Let's see, Cinderella Live DVD. Let's just see what happens when I put that in. There's actually one in concert that's on DVD, and I'm not sure what that is uh, that's out there, but I do not see that DVD that I've got on the screen. They do have a greatest uh, video hits listed, but they don't have any out there. So, yeah, it's only $10 for whatever this other concert one is. I might have to check that out. $10 in concert remastered edition. Mm, very cool. All right. I'll have to see what live performance from American glam rockers, Cinderella. The concert features among other tracks. Nobody's fool. Yeah. And it doesn't say when it, when it was. Um, so anyway, but that's that. So check that out. Um, and, uh, and sorry to see Jeff Labargo. He was a great guy. Earlier today, I also talked about a band out of Pennsylvania called Hybrid Ice. Um, this is their first album, uh, which you can get for $15 on their website. Uh, you can also get uh, No Rules, their second album, for $15. And only $10 for Mind's Eye, the album that came out in 2009. Um, Jeff, this is a band. Were you ever into Boston? Uh, I wouldn't say I was into them. I mean, there are songs that... Also, I only know the songs I heard on the radio. Yeah, right. You know? And I, like them. I, I never yeah. went and, uh, and listened to anything else. So okay. I don't know if I truly like them or not. Well, I'll tell you what. I I was a big fan when they came out. I remember, wow, isn't this interesting? I mean, is it is it bad if I say somebody's name on it? I don't think so on the show. So there was a gentleman named Scott Neese when I was a kid. And he... Uh, we were able to, at certain times, bring records in because we had this new young teacher as a music teacher in grade school, like fifth or sixth grade. I'd have to do my math to find out when it was. But um, somebody brought in Nazareth, uh, Hair of the Dog album, 
Um, and I think that was 75. But then Scott brought in Boston and we played a song from the Boston album in class from wow. that first album, that 1976 debut record, which was smashing, amazing, overplayed on Casey. It's too much. But there is a local band called Foreplay and they do long time foreplay is one of the big songs that they do. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, they put out uh, a couple of years later, they finally put out Don't Look Back, which had a few hits off of it. Uh, one of the greatest 70s power ballads is on that record. I, In my opinion, Man I'll Never Be is fantastic. That is a, that's a one smoking awesome power ballad. But then they put out Third Stage. It was all the way into the 80s that they put out Third Stage. And I'll never forget, Jeff, you'll love this. Huh. I was in charge of doing record reviews. There's a couple of things that you'll get a charge out of here. Um, I did record reviews for the school newspaper. How odd, right? Um, but I interviewed, I, I reviewed, uh, oh, that's trippy. Thanks, June. Uh and I, I reviewed the Georgia Satellites. I reviewed Deep Purple. I reviewed, this is what else you're going to get a kick out of. I reviewed Beastie Boys. Huh. Licensed to Ill. Does that sound like something I need to review? I don't think so. <laughs> I have a different view on it now. But back then, I gave it a good review, though. Um, it's a classic. And, uh, yeah, because I didn't want anybody with those whiny voices to come and yell at me. Um, but no, uh but then I, I reviewed Boston's third stage and I gave it a bad review. Oh. Let's, let's put it this way. I gave it, I didn't give it a favorable review oh. and I was working on the radio. This was 1986 when it came out and I was working on the radio and I played Amanda Their They, their first single from the album was a huge, was a, uh, when I say huge, I just mean it was a ballad. I mean, it was syrupy. It was, you know, there was, there was some power to it later, but it was a really syrupy song called Amanda. It's pretty. I like it. I liked playing it, but there were, there were some other songs on the album that were really cool. And I never got to play those on the radio. Cool Your Engines uh, was a great song, but, uh, but then it, uh, one of my frat brothers gave me a load of crap because I didn't like it. He's like, He's like, that's a great record. I'm like, okay, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? First, how dare you? First of all, it's not a great record, in my opinion. It's not a great record. And I'm sure there's a bunch of Boston fans that don't feel the same <laughs> or that feel the same as I do. So I don't know. What really torqued me off is they had a song on the record which was really just a long elongated bridge and he called it another name of a song. So I'm like, that's not really a song. It's like an, it's like an overpriced bridge is really all it is. So but he didn't like me, but after that, it was many years later, they put out an album called walk on. Um, and this album was kind of redeeming. Uh, it actually was pretty good all the way through. If I put them back to back, I think I'd probably say I like Walk On better than Third Stage. But on that record was a song called Magdalene. And that was a Hybrid Ice tune. So Hybrid Ice had that song back in 1982 uh, on their first record. So uh, so the, here's a little bit about them. It says, uh, take note, this is the an official and sanctioned biography of a rock group whose career spanned nearly three decades. The longevity of this band was unprecedented. The history of the band unique. The people they met might surprise you. The story itself is long. You might want to save it as a file or print it for reading offline. But here's what they said of Hybrid Ice. Was once described by basif, bassist Jeff Willoughby as the most famous unknown band in the world. Famous in the sense that it seems that everyone has heard or heard of them 
from Pennsylvania to Florida to the Midwestern states of to Stockholm, Sweden, to Sofia, Bulgaria. I know somebody from Bulgaria. More on that later, it says. Unknown in the sense that despite their independent success, they were never signed to a major label. So they started in 69. Um, and on here, it says to 2006, but they released their third album in 2009. So anyway, they're from Danville, Pennsylvania. So check out Hybrid Ice. It's kind of cool. It's really, really good stuff. My buddy who grew up in Pennsylvania um, is the one that turned me on to it. And like I said, I thought he gave me a copy and he didn't. So now I got to buy their first album because I don't have it. Maybe they're really popular in uh, South Africa without anyone knowing. Yeah, right. Where is Sugarman? Yeah. <laughs> Where is Hybrid Ice? <laughs> <laughs> was that not like one of the best stories ever? That this guy thinks he's a complete failure at what he did. He stopped even making music and he finds out there's a group of people that think he's the greatest thing of all time. Uh, totally. Crazy. Totally. I love the story. It's so neat. It is really, really cool. If you've never seen it, check out. Is it on any streaming services right now? Do you know? I don't know. It was at some point because that's how I watched it, but I don't know about now. That was years ago. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, searching for Sugarman. If if you uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, my buddy my buddy John turned me on to that. I do believe the best um, part was everyone thought he was dead. Yes, and not only that. Well, we really shouldn't ruin it for anybody. Any further than that? I mean, I don't know. Stephen Sugar uh, is. Seegerman is the guy's name. Um, and it's a crazy, crazy uh, story. Let's see what it says. It's Well, it says it's on Amazon Prime. I don't oh. know if it's on there for free, but... Oh, that's right. Yeah, sometimes they charge for stuff. Yeah, you got to rent it or buy it. Uh, I think I own a copy. <clears throat> uh, because I think I got it when I worked at the warehouse for the book company, um, they had DVDs in there. It's really got some uh, neat stuff on it too. Like the trans, some of the transitional uh, video where it's got the animated figure walking along the street. Uh, those were some kind of cool cuts. I really enjoyed that. But yeah, it's a crazy story, people. Uh, you just got, you just got to watch it. Um, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, "How is this even true?" Well, you know what else is re what else is really cool. Um, <laughs> thanks, JD, for the Van Halen. I don't feel. Um, <laughs> did you bring a pencil? <laughs> I can give you something to write on. Um, but uh, uh, what was I going to say? The uh, the movie. Um, shoot, what was I going to say about it? Um, the really cool, the really cool thing about it is, um, is that when I went over to Europe last year, this is what I was going to say. When I went to Europe, I saw, I went to four shows that were Steel Panther shows where Wayward Sons were opening. And I got over to England and went to Bristol and then came back to London before I came back home. And the, the London show, was it the London show? Yes. Yeah. The London show, I got right up front and I'm standing there waiting for the show. And uh, a woman uh, stepped up and she had her two older kids there with her. And uh, we just got to chatting. And she said, I said, hey, uh, I said, yeah, I'm kind of here watching Wayward Sons. She goes, Wayward Sons, they're playing. I, I love them. I go, yeah, they're opening. So it was so trippy that she wanted to, that she liked those guys and they were opening the show and she didn't know that. But um, the other cool thing is she lived in South Africa uh, prior. She grew up in South Africa and she knew about that whole movement. She was totally in on that guy, on the music and the uh, impact that it had on their social uh, situation. And how many people tied into it? He's still alive, isn't he? I believe. I believe so. Um, I should look that up. 
Yeah, Steel Panther. Steel Panther. Um, yeah, I ended up sitting down. I think I've, I've mentioned this before. Sitting down in Belgium at a TGI Fridays talking with Russ. Um, and he is a phenomenal guitar player. I'd love to have him on the show, but you got to kind of play their game when you interview them. And I don't really feel like doing that. Um, I'm not, I'm not that crude in public like that. Um, but yeah, the, the funny thing is, it's like I've said before, Steel Panther is a thing that when I heard them, because my buddy Mike loves them and, I, and he's seen them multiple times live. And I was like, yeah, no, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. And then, uh, and then I saw them live, and now I, now I'm at home listening to their nasty, dirty songs, and Christine's going, mm. she doesn't get it. One day I might take her to a show, but, uh, but yeah. Um, so anyway, we got to talking about that whole thing, and it was really incredible that she experienced that, that time frame when he went over there. So it was really, really incredible. Um, now I went, uh, I had to get my, my, do oh, we got storms coming. Yeah. It just thundered um, here. I same was here. Back, I was like, was that thunder or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of wild. Um, so today, uh, I was really excited because I got my steel city stuff. I got my, oh, look here. Here's this. Uh, I, I showed it today. I, Papa Pete's not the only one that gets autographed photos, I guess, right? These are the, uh, this is Kayla and Kelly who will be on the show next Tuesday. All right. They, they are why the, uh, the overlay, right? That is correct. They did not. They signed the actual photo, as you can <laughs> see there. So there's. <laughs> I almost made that horrible mistake at a Mystery Science Theater show. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're doing something live here in town. And I showed up with, uh, a DVD of theirs. Yeah. I went to hand it to, I handed it to, I think maybe Joel. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks at it and he goes, do you want me to sign it? It's it's still sealed. And I was like, oh, geez. Oh. I see here, let me take that off. And then he signed it. I was like, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> so first of all, you're a little embarrassed that <laughs> it's still wrapped. <laughs> you're like, I really love no, you guys, I, I, I think. I love you. I, I didn't just buy this to get it autographed. Um, the other thing that came today to, or came the other day that I finally opened today, uh, was my angel tickets, uh, a note about my angel tickets and how everything was going to go down when we go to the show. It came, it came in this envelope and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. It came from Nashville. I'm like, what is that? Uh, but I got my Steel City stuff, so that's really, really cool. I almost put it, I almost put this on over the top of my Elvis shirt and then stripped out of it to go, Whoa, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> just but, rip it off like Hulk Hogan and get over it. <laughs> no, I couldn't do that. I just got it for the uh, show, Stuart. Oh, that's right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to make some crap shirts up and do them for the show. <laughs> Uh, so he had they had major major ray storms. The sky was basically clear and bright. Wow, bright red sun. Not a black hole sun, but a bright red sun. Um. So then I went uh, to take my dog to an appointment, right? Because she has appointments, and um, so then I remembered I needed to go by the library today because I had some Elvis stuff that was on hold for me. And this is something I was, one of the things I'm going to show you, Jeff, is, is something I wonder if you've seen. But first, but first. <laughs> but first. <laughs> How do you sit on the toilet? But first. Um, so I, w I always go back to their sales rack. Do you ever go to the sales rack at a library, at the county library? I haven't been in the library in like 20 years. So no is the answer. But when I did, I used to check out their little sales because their sales are usually pretty darn good. I know, right? Stuff CDs. Are cheap. CDs for 50 cents. <clears throat> so I went in there 
and I'm getting ready to start a new band. Uh, it's a blues, blues rock kind of band. And um, so I kind of flipped out about what I, what I got, but let me show you what I got. I went in there. I went to the shelf. I got my books, which I'll show you in a second. And I got everything that was on hold for me. But then I went over to the sales area and I found Johnny Lang. Johnny Lang and the Big Bang. Huh. So, and I got this Johnny Lang. Smoking. I don't know why. Every time you're saying Johnny Lang, I'm thinking Johnny Landoff. <laughs> Johnny Landoff Chevrolet. <laughs> no. Oh, look. Hold on. I, get, I got a message from Gina. Well, Johnny owns his own building and lot. Uh, how about this? You ready? I'll do this right here. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Dang. I started talking. I shouldn't have started talking because then it put it in here. It's cool. Whenever you get here, you've got the link. You can hop on. No problem. He's still driving. Uh, la, 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 there. Okay. So then, uh, I've got this one too. Uh, Johnny Lang lie to me. Still not Johnny Londo. Mm. Yeah. Johnny Lang Chevrolet could have done that. Should we just call him Lang off? Lang off? Lang off. Lang off. <laughs> Sounds like a villain. <laughs> He's he says he says, dang, he really wanted to do this one. Well, I know. Uh, who didn't want to do this one? <laughs> Everybody wants to do this one. Why, why isn't JD on the show? He should come on the show. Oh, he he can. I mean, I can I should just send him the link. Yeah, uh, see if he can make it. What do I have to do to do that though? Don't I have to back out or can I just do another link? Uh, you, can can I just, do it? you can just click the invite button, copy, and then paste oh. it in Messenger. Wait, Ooh. you mean like uh uh so I it's I forgot. Is there an invite thing right here on our screen that we've got? Yeah, here I can do it. I just copied it. Yeah, do that. And then I've got Yeah, see if he wants to do that. Uh, and I just got another massage. Okay, he says he's working on it, so he he might make it. We can keep rolling. Um, so yeah, more Johnny Lang. Lie to me. That's a. I mean, that's like a popular one of his albums. Um, and then there's Johnny Lang. Long time coming. So lots of Johnny Lang. I flipped out. Hmm. I just I just bought it all. Cause why? How much are they? Do you have any guesses? Fifty cents. Damn straight, man. <laughs> Things are so cheap at the library. That's what it's such so great about. I know, but what a slam dunk! Nice, nice guess. So I a yeah. lot of prices right in my day, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know uh, how much a box of rice aroni was back in nineteen seventy eight? How much? 68 cents. What? <laughs> Mountain climber. This is a show about music. That's what this is. There you go. Mountain climber. And, and that's yodeling. That's music to somebody. Um, to, to the price is right, I guess it is. So did you see this? Did you, did you ever notice this? Did I Did I show you this before? Christine says I do this just so I have something else to do with my CDs. But see, I don't like it like this because when you have CDs, what happens? Or video games. Let's just say even video games if you have more of those. So like the PlayStation games that come in these cases, what's the worst part? The worst part is trying to get the box, the, the booklet out, and then it, you can't get it over these, these two bumps, right? So what I do is I take the CD cover out – Turn it sideways and do that. 
So then it looks like this. Oh. So then when you go to get it out, you just bump it up and it comes out this way. Very cool. Yeah, so now you can do that with all of your PlayStation games. It'll give you a little something extra to do this weekend. Woo! All right, so Johnny Lang. Then, and let's do it to this one. I found a couple of Don Henleys, even though he's kind of he's kind of be being kind of gripey right now on about YouTube music use, you know, for like nine seconds of a song or something like that. And he, he says, I can't I I have 60 people, 60 people employed to watch over that stuff. You have 60 people just sitting in a room all day long, just looking for when they use your music. Huh. I mean, I'm, I guess he's employing people, so that's good. But, geez, how would you like to be one of those people? Not bad. You know. uh, and then I got this other Don Henley. Um, this is the one with dirty laundry. Can't stand still. Now, here's the last one. This one freaked me out. I couldn't believe I found it. Wingspan. Can you believe that? 50 cents for a double Paul McCartney best of. Wow. That's really good. Uh, I mean, it's the music on here. It's crazy. I'm just like, now my big question is, is I don't think I have this, but if I do, I'll give you this. But it's got a booklet in it. It's got a... A, a material cover. I mean, it's a little faded, but who cares? That Paul McCartney was pretty good. Yeah, he had a couple couple good things. You know, uh, I heard he could play music and sing pretty well. So I'm looking forward to hearing everything that I'd never heard before. I always loved on his first solo album that he he wrote all the songs, uh, sang yeah. all the songs, and played every instrument on the song on the album. Right. He just did the whole thing. He's like, I don't need anyone else. You know what? <laughs> I'm just doing Dave, the whole thing myself. Yeah, Dave Grohl did the same thing for that first Foo Fighters record. It's just amazing. Like, it is amazing. <laughs> I just can't look at one person I have. I don't know. I got a buddy of mine that's like that. I mean, you know, he's a brainiac. He's very smart. He plays piano, bass, guitar, sings, acts, and then he does artwork, too. He'll paint. Yeah, I have a, a friend. He's, he, a he's got uh, two sons or twins. Yeah. Um, he said they can just pick up any musical instrument and just learn it on their own. It's like it's amazing. Did you did you just want to like go start getting instruments and just throw them at them? Do it. I'll be back next week. I was like, man, if I, if, if if my kids were or like that, I think I'd have them record me like. It, it would be so cool to have them like here's my here's one of my favorite albums. Why don't you re-record it for me in your style? Give it to me for my birthday. Be like, wow, awesome that's cool. That would that's be, a cool thought. I know. I like it. Wow. Wow. I love it. Well, this thing has listen to what the man said, band on the run, another day, live and let die, jet, my love. You know every song, right? Yep. Silly love songs, nice. pipes of peace, sea moon, high, 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 let them in. Good night tonight, Junior's Farm, Mole of Kintyre. I love Junior's Farm. Oh, me too. I don't think I've ever me. heard that on the radio, but man, I really like that song. I've always been dying to do that in a band. Maybe I can get this new band to do it. You know, playing uh, really good songs that were never really on the radio seems mm -hmm. like a great way to go for a band, you know, because. You're not playing the same old stuff, but it's an awesome song. Welcome to my world, brother. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. So that that was my haul from from uh, the library today. Three dollars and that whole stack. Three dollars and fifty cents. That's crazy. Now, what else I did get, and this is what I want to know if you've seen. Let's start getting into the Elvis thing. Do you like my? Uh, this is my Memphis across the street oh, from nice. Graceland was a gift shop. And that was my bargain get, uh, thing from the gift shop. And then I got a t-shirt 
I had to get the t-shirts. And uh I've never but, been yeah. a great one. You know, I mean, if 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 you guys if you guys can break away sometime, we should go and go together, and that would be a blast be to hang out with you guys down there, you know, and go through. Because since we've already been through it, um, you know, and, and 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 I have an in because one of my coworkers actually used to work there for fifteen years. Whoa! Right. Do they let you flop around on his bed like Billy Squire? Yeah, I'm going to go with a no, <laughs> but they did let me hold a pink Telecaster while I wore my pink tank top. See, that was a pretty good music uh, little <laughs> <laughs> note there. <laughs> they let me flop around on his bed like Billy Squire. <laughs> that poor guy. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I like Billy Squire so much, but that was terrible. So do I. And I love that song. But, I mean, it is so... Do you know what he's doing right now, though? Do you know musically what he's doing? I I, I didn't know he has put any music out since... Uh... He's he's in Ringo Starr's All-Star <laughs> Band right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Along with Gary Wright. You know, I... Mr. Mr. Dreamweaver. I saw... Um... Ringo and his all-star band at um oh what's that venue here in um Riverport? Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what it's called now, but that's what it was called then. That's what I always call it because um, I don't I don't like these horror buildings anymore. I can't remember what the um I don't remember who else was there, but he was there with his all-star band. It was pretty cool. He had uh um Joe Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. Yeah. Yeah. And a bunch of, just a whole bunch of guys. It was neat because they were yeah. playing their songs, playing his songs. Yes. It's, it's kind of like a great uh, idea. It is. It's kind of like uh, live from Daryl's house um, when when he has people in. Have you ever watched that? Mm -mm. Oh, dude, you need to watch that because it's, it's really amazing. Need a few minutes having a second canned meal. <laughs> JD says he'll be here soon. <laughs> So a second canned meal. Um, sounds delicious. It sounds like ravioli is what it sounds like. Um, now, do, you, do you like regular ravioli or mini ravioli better? From Chef Boy. Chef Boy. Probably, chef, chef, is that the robotic way to say it? <laughs> chef Boy RD. Uh, have you ever watched uh, the old commercials when he was actually on there, the real chef? Yeah. Boy yeah. yeah. His name was Boy RD. Wow. They just changed the pronunciation for whatever reason. So yeah, so his name was B B Boyardi. Spelled very similar, but you know a little bit different. But well, like bon John Bon Jovi, it was his name is Bon Giovi. Huh. And what's really crazy is when you watch, look at the first Bon Jovi record. Uh oh, his fridge and freezer are dead. That's terrible. That is terrible. That sucks. I'm sorry, JD. Yeah, live at Daryl's house. Um, he started it at his house. He had two homes that he bought. Uh, one of them, I think, stayed where it was. And then he found another one. Uh, they, you know, it's these, and it's way up north. So it's in Connecticut, upper New York. And he he brought one to the other and married them with this structure in the middle. Really? And he was just going to have that as kind of a hanging out room plan. But he kind of turned it into a studio and he started having people out. Anybody from Smokey Robinson to um, uh, CeeLo Green to Neon Trees to Cheap Trick folks. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to remember anybody else. I, I mean, there's a bunch. He had John Oates came out too. And uh, and they, they would do songs in there. And so like CeeLo Green would come and they'd do his song and then he would pick songs from the Hall and Oates or the Daryl Hall catalog and they'd do those. So oh hey, it was I right? We mail it. It was show, yeah. Oh wow. There we go. I so now you have to ask him. Oh yeah, what was do you it, do you was it mini or mini or regular size? I like the mini. I like the mini too. 
And I, I've never had any, anything else besides the the meat ravioli yeah, or beef ravioli. Yeah, that'd be the only one I'd want. So did you like did you like spaghettios? I never really had them until recently, to be honest. And and you tell me, is it is it tomato soup with pasta? Pretty much. I mean, I've tried tomato soup, and I'm like, well, this is just a ripoff. It's with little, with little meatballs. We get the meatball versions. Oh, uh, you like the meatball? Do you, how about the hot dog one? I haven't tried that. The uh, spaghettios mm. with with what Frank's? Hot, is that what it's called? Yeah, with Frank's. Yeah, with Frank's. Uh, uh, Ringo's All Star Band was amazing. Greg Rowley and Luke, Luke Thur. Is that who that is? Luke. Is that Luke. JD with those regular size. Ravioli, I don't know. Uh, he likes the big bite, man. Yeah. Got to have the big bite. And then you get through one can, you have another one. Cheese like, ravioli is tomorrow. I've never had cheese ravioli. I would. I To me, that seems like a waste. I don't know. I just had some toasted ravioli before we went on the air. You did not. From where? <clears throat> Cecil Whitaker's. Oh, Cecil Whitaker's. I haven't There's done that a, in a long time. I'm trying to think who's, who's out here. Is it Telenia's? I, I can't remember. But whoever it is, is a, they do pizza, but we got some toast ravioli from them. And they're weird. They're like this big and they're round, which is bizarre. Oh, the round ones. Yeah, I've had but, those. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so, their ravioli was so good. <laughs> toast ravioli was delicious. Wow. Well, I was I'll impressed because. Because most of the toaster ravioli I try, it's just kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel like they just bought it in. This one tasted fresh, like they made it themselves. Wow. Well, yeah, you'll have to tell me where that is. We'll have to get that and play some games. Yes. It's all a waste of calories. I want to just hit a real Italian restaurant. <laughs> That'd be great. I, I even laughed at the end. Instead of saying, ha ha, I even just laughed. So that worked out. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so, uh, so Christine and I ended up going to, um, we ended up going to, uh, Memphis, uh, and getting, uh, staying at a B and B and, uh, she called it a glorified <laughs> beer run is all it was. She said, <laughs> <laughs> she that could be a lot of vacations. That could be a lot of vacations because we can get, we can get, uh, Yingling down there and, uh, and we went into their Kroger, and I maybe I've mentioned it on the show before, but that's what flipped us out, man. We went to Kroger, and here was all these different kinds of uh, uh, all these different kinds of Yingling down there, including black and tan, which we didn't even know existed. So, uh, but we she took me there because she wanted to go to Sun Studios for me. She's a re real sweetheart like that. She she loves making these trips where we go to music places uh to get away and then we she goes but we're going to graceland and i'm like okay um and i learned so so much and the one show have you watched this yet no is that one of his movies or is it a documentary it's a documentary the definitive film about elvis the artist Elvis okay. Presley, the searcher. Yeah. So it says he was a boy from Tupelo who grew up to become the biggest star in music. Um, along the way, he achieved a staggering uh, range of influences. So it's it's got all kinds of people in it, like Tom Petty and um, let's see. It says special feature here is in conversation with Priscilla Presley, Tom Zim, Tom Zimney, uh, Jerry Schilling, and Scott Goldman. Is it weird to think he, it, he was the most well-known person on the planet? Can you imagine being somebody like that? Well, no. I mean, that's what ultimately. It's crazy. That's what ultimately is the problem. It's it's the reason <laughs> Michael Jackson isn't here anymore. It's. You know, it's the thing was, that can uh, drive you nuts. Um, one of my favorite Elvis songs actually is his first one. Um, uh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. 
And that came out, I didn't realize, I knew it was really early, but it came out in 54. Right. Like 54, was there any, was there any rock and roll in 54? Uh, so, no, not, not. Um, rock Around the Clock was 55. Wasn't that really early as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. wow, 54. Yeah. That had the sounds just so strange on the radio. Well, and, you know, you, you got to wonder about him a little bit, too. You wonder if, you know, what what drove him to to be like that? What drove him to make those moves? What, you know, um, and again, I, I, I should have looked up a little bit of footage of him with his karate. Um, hey. Big karate, uh, because it's just kind of to me when I saw him doing it, it looked kind of silly. Huh. Um, because it just didn't seem on point, you know. In <laughs> fact, Joe Joe Rogan, there's a there's actually a Joe Rogan thing where he's like reacting to uh to that but i mean you know he'd, he'd, he'd do some moves and be like, oh, 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 oh. and you're like okay it's it's like a kid just doing karate i think, think some it's psychological because like this is elvis why is he doing karate right you know it's, it just doesn't make any sense in your head because like no why isn't he singing why is he what? shaking his hips why is he why is he doing karate <laughs> Although some of his moves, it seems like it's only natural that you go in that direction. Um, oh, look at this. Savatore's here. Hey, how's it going? An interesting documentary is the Terry Kath experience. Never heard of that. For your information, currently free with ads on YouTube. Interesting. Okay. That's beautiful. Well, now, what I did the other day was I did actually, I used the uh, Amazon stick. And uh, watched Elvis with Kurt Russell. Hmm. It was made. It was released like a year and a half after he died uh, in 1979. Um, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Uh, JD says it's a must see. There's something else too, JD. We were talking about today that's a must see, um, and I think that was a, a, a show about Tower Records too. I wonder how many Elvis albums Tower Records sold. Um, because that was a big thing out there in California. Back you know, in I'm, a, I'm a huge Buddy Holly fan. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, years and years ago, when I was looking at a bunch of stories on Buddy Holly and just his life, um, Elvis came to Lubbock, Lubbock, and I think in the just the general area in Texas there for yeah. these uh, like fairs. Sure. And this was before he was, I think, national. Mm -hmm. It was because I think he really took off in like 56 or so mm -hmm. when he had his first uh, big hit with a uh, big label. And, and I so, think, I think something you just said there too, is really important to always remember Elvis in sales was international, but in appearance was only national. So go ahead. Yeah. And he, uh, it's just, it, it's such a weird story. He, so he'd go to Lubbock, and and uh, Buddy Holly would open for him. Buddy Holly was playing with a guy, a friend of his, um, Bob Montgomery. Mm. And so Buddy Holly and Elvis got to know each other. And um, there was one <laughs> on one of his, on one of the concerts they did after afterwards. Elvis mm. had his, his big Cadillac there. Okay. And he took Buddy Holly and Bob Montgomery uh, in his Cadillac, and they just drove around. And I'm thinking, how would you like to be Bob Montgomery? You drove around one evening with Elvis Presley and Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly. The only person in the world that probably ever did that. Is that what yeah. a crazy story that would be to know? Well, to know both of them and then hang out with them. I mean, of course, he was yeah. good friends with Buddy Holly because they played together. But it's like, wow. Yeah, that's just nuts. Well, and you know, it's like I say, everybody's got their Stones, everybody's got their Beatles, everybody's got their Elvis, everybody's got these people that 
that's like that. You know, I remember having the same feeling sitting in a car with Richie Rano from Stars and Frank Domino from Angel. I'm in Las Vegas driving to see one of my favorite bass players, Kenny Aronson, in a car with these two guys. I get, I get back home and I'm hanging out with friends who are huge Angel fans, huge Stars fans. And I'm like, I was just sitting in the car with a guy from both bands. <laughs> it's like we yeah. had dinner with uh, Bert Navarre, the neck. Bert- like, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't, don't even know who the hell he is. But, no. but you know, for me, that was like, that was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, one of my favorite bands of all time. And we're having dinner with them? Like, what? We're, what the heck? we're having fish <laughs> with Bert Navarre. <laughs> <laughs> They had Buddy Holly's guitar at the entrance of the Play It Loud exhibit at the Met in New York City, along with Beatles' Ed Sullivan drum set and Van Halen's Frankenstein. Mm. Man. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's actually uh, that's going to be part of this, this uh, project I'm going to be working on here in about a month. It sounds like it might be about a month. But HSAS 1984. Uh, Hagar, Sammy Hagar, um, and then Neil Schoen from Journey, and of course Santana, uh, Kenny Aronson on bass, who was in Dust, and uh, uh, what else was? Why can't I think of what else Kenny was in? Um, and then Michael Shreve, who was in Santana with Neil Schoen, put on an you. album. I gotta show you this story. So sure. Yeah, so Elvis had his first song in 54, and then in 55, he was doing a lot of stuff. I know he played with, you know, he played with Buddy Holly several times. Yeah. But, um, oh, shoot, which one is this? Um, he still wasn't, like, national. I think he was more regional then, like, in the South. So okay. he was well-known in the South, but I don't think he was well-known. But here's something that kind of proves that he wasn't well-known. I don't know if you can read. Oh, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Let me blow it up here a little bit. Uh, where is it? Right. Big Whoop. stage Whoop. show. Five big stars. Alvis Presley. So this is in 55. Wow. 1955. <laughs> and he'd already had a, a hit out called, you know, That's All Right. Yeah. He, he still wasn't big enough that people knew his name. <laughs> Alvis. 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 <laughs> He made a great chipmunk. <laughs> but by the next year in 56, that's when he exploded. And uh, wow. But I just think it's funny. I mean, looking back, they really didn't really know who uh they didn't really know who Elvis was at the point at that point. It was just well, Elvis Elvis didn't know who Elvis was at that point. You no. know? I mean, how do you how do you know? I mean, I, I love a lot of the footage where where you've got, uh, he's on stage, right? And maybe not much is happening. And then all of a sudden he's like, and all of a sudden they're just like going nuts. And they're not even playing music. He's like, and then they go nuts. And I mean, I've seen it in concerts where, you know, I've seen it in concerts where somebody shows up on stage and the crowd goes wild. You know, I, I remember, uh, Judas Priest show, you know, in the metal world, uh, Rob Halford, you know, really charges an audience. And it's a lot of times just standing on the stage, like Defenders of the Faith tour around that time. He'd just get up on stage, stand there, and we'd all just go nuts. Isn't it weird that when Elvis first started in TV, they wouldn't film him from the waist down? Waist down, yeah. That's yeah, that's. that's <laughs> That's a part of that uh, Elvis film with Kurt Russell. Keep keep the camera and the w- above the waist. That's what the, you could hear him telling him in the camera room. Part of you know, it almost makes you think. Maybe it was like <laughs> it's like it, if Elvis would have come up with that idea, it would have been brilliant because it even adds more to the mystique. It's like exactly like Kiss yeah. with makeup. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I've never seen him. You know, <laughs> so it's 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 kind of wild. It's kind of wild. Um, you'd like to think it was a typo, but I don't, I don't know. My, it could have been, but my guess is, I mean, people have put the show together 
maybe they had heard of him and they didn't really know the difference between Elvis and Alvis because it's kind of close. They're like, is it Alvin or Elvis? Uh, just do Alvis. <laughs> I'm guessing in the next year in 56, nobody would have made that typo. Because well, Jeff so popular I, at that point. Right. <laughs> and Jeff and I both worked in the newspaper ad industry. So <laughs> could you imagine being the person who put that one together now? Yeah. When those things go out, yeah. I know sometimes, <laughs> I know sometimes we, like there was an ad, I can't remember what exactly the word was, but. It was a headline and it kind of went like across like this. But the, the, the very first, like the initial letter of each sentence yeah. um, actually ended up spelling some kind of a curse word or something. And it was like really embarrassing. <laughs> oh, man. I always go back to that aquarium ad that I got from Penny where it was like, Penny. it was like, it was, it was an ad for a little pet shop and it said they had an aquarium for $8.99. And some ass. <laughs> I'm like, you sure you don't? You sure we shouldn't put a semb or something? Is, is some ass? You want some ass? Well, it's okay. like the classic story of uh, <laughs> um, when I was talking to one of the sales reps about. Um, she gave me the copy for it, and I gave it to gave. I built the ad, gave it back to her. She took it to the client, yeah. and yeah. they just started laughing because uh, instead of. Uh, Free year-end exam. It came out free urine exam. <laughs> it's like whoops. Somebody's <laughs> going to be pissed about that. Yeah, <laughs> she she didn't hear that one quite right. <laughs> How'd that go? Eh. <laughs> Give my free urine exams, everyone. A free urine exam. Oh my lord. Well, let me see here. I think I've got. Yes, that was there's, there's a lot of great typos that go out. Uh, here, let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can do this here real quick. Yeah, sometimes the typos are just even better than what you originally had planned. Oh, absolutely. I don't know why absolutely. people get upset with them. It's just it's comical. It is. I'm like, why? Why are you going to be mad about that? It's freaking hilarious. Um. Let me see if I can bring this in because uh, uh, I found this. Uh, I've, uh, <laughs> thanks for the. I love your background music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, I guess everybody already knows by now. This is my good buddy Jeff from Go Game Go. You've been on the show before, though, briefly, right? Briefly. I was wearing a Devo hat. So the oh, that's Devo right. You were wearing your me. Devo hat. I love that's that. Weird. That's right. All right. I'll find this damn thing. Where'd it go? Did it? I have more menus. There's always a typo in a menu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of an episode of Cheers. Remember Norm used to go to the Hungry Heifer a lot? Yes. And it was like yeah. really bad food. And when he took some of them to actually to the restaurant, they were looking and uh, there was like a surf and turf and it was. It was Beth and Loopster. And they're they talking about the typos. Oh, it's not a typo because it's not real beef or lobster. <laughs> Beth I never Loopster. said it was beef. I never said it was lobster. <laughs> Loopster. That's now here's this point. here's this video. Everybody was
that, see what that, I'm talking about? That jumpsuit is way too tight to be doing some of those moves. <laughs> I just realized that outfit he's wearing really wasn't much different than what Charles Nelson Riley would wear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just? Could you just call it the Charles Nelson Riley? <laughs> Elvis is Charles Nelson Nelson Rileying. Is that how you say it? <laughs> it's Rileying. Rileying. I I I got caught Rileying. Hey, if Have you ever heard of this story about Elvis? This conspiracy theory. Uh, God, it's so which one? <clears throat> So well, who's it's, who's it's based theory? on him being alive, but yeah, okay. The, the this theory is that he faked his life or faked his life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he worked with your... Elvis. He didn't even have any songs. He's he faked the whole <laughs> that, thing. That's your that, that's your verbal typo for the night. <laughs> he faked everything, dude. Trust me, I've been faking my life for my whole life. I'm faking really this worked, right now. You really work in a gas station. <laughs> I'll have what he's having. Um, but the theory was, you know, you know how it, Elvis faked his death. And, yeah. But this story is he moved to Missouri and was, and eventually went under care of a psychiatrist here in Missouri. Huh. And this guy claims he treated Elvis for years and years. It's very strange. That is strange. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that story. They, they moved to Missouri and uh, need to seek psychological help. Well, the the there's a, a film out there called I guess it's called like it's on YouTube. It's called the last. It was called the last days of Elvis. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> ultimately that was his goal. I mean, ultimately. Um, you know, and, 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 and when I watch these interviews on this show, um, let me see if I can find this last, the last days of Elvis, is that what it was called? But it's got some really good interviews with a lot of the folks from his entourage, um, and including his, the, I think it was called Elvis last 24 hours. And there's Jerry Schilling on there right there. Um, and um and what it what it talks about a lot is what he was planning to do uh multiple people in there say that he was planning on getting away from it getting rid of the colonel uh going to hawaii spending five years there and getting himself cleaned up eating right and and then come back in about five years and slowly work his way into uh, Hollywood. He wasn't interested necessarily in the music anymore. Hmm. At that point, he wanted to come back and get into Hollywood. But so, I mean, and, and it makes complete sense. Um, <laughs> How do you think Elvis's life would have been different if his manager was Colonel Sanders? Oh, he'd be really fat. <laughs> Think you would have made it past the, what, 1977? Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, well, and, and, and he'd have had a chance to go worldwide. You know, the problem with, you know, if, even if you want to, even if you want to term Colonel Sanders as just somebody else. Who has great chicken? Um, then, yeah. I mean, the only reason the colonel didn't go to Europe with him, uh, have him go to Europe, is because he had legal problems there that uh, tied him to a murder. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. That's terrible. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, that was the big thing about the colonel and why he the never colonel killed somebody. Him. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, a woman. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's that's the report. So that's what why they. That What's that? What a life that guy had. Got his hooks oh, in the helmets, and he. I know. Phew. Talking about I being know. in the right spot at the right time. I, exactly, exactly. You find an opportunity, and that's why he 
was so controlled all those years. I mean, so Elvis is dealing not only with, I don't write songs. <clears throat> like ultimately, when it comes down, like when it comes down to Magdalene, right? So it was a hybrid ice tune. But when it appears on this album, it's got a, a Tom Scholes. I need to listen to them both. And I need to understand what it is that's different and why Tom Scholes ends up on the writing credits for Magdalene on here. He, along with two other guys, which I'm sure, are, you know, from my hybrid ice, but, but Tom Scholes is on there for writing credits. Now I understand why like Doug Figer <clears throat> would show up on writing credits for, uh, all I ever, what is it? All I ever do is make her mad. Is it, what's that song title? Everything I do makes her mad, right? For the, wait. for Zoom is on the Zoom album. Oh, geez. I don't remember all the songs off of Zoom. Okay. He, he got that song. He bought that song off of a female artist who wrote it about her girlfriend. Hmm. And he goes, I really like that song but I need to change it up a little bit because, uh, you know, I'm not in that, you know, I, there's a few lines that, that, uh, you know, that aren't the way I would think they should be. So he, but he got a, uh, from a, a woman who had written about her girlfriend. Um, and then he changed it up a little bit. So I get the writing credit there. If you give yourself part of the writing credit, but, um, um I know, do a dramatic. I know back, uh, with Buddy Holly, uh, Norm Petty shows up on some of the credits of writing. Matter of fact, I think he was on the credit for Peggy Sue, which he didn't write, mm -hmm. but he was the producer. So we kind of put his name in a few of the songs. Yeah. I guess he yeah. felt that you know, he was helping him with a certain sound and maybe he felt that was good enough. And well, that's, that's where, that's where there's a fine line. And I, I do understand yeah. that if you're going to do something different with a song and change it or, make it change the dynamic then yeah i mean that's like that's like when i get into a song that somebody else has written right so they say they wrote this song but all of a sudden there's a part within that where i'm playing bass and i'm like all they've got me do it is thumping along on the notes right bloop, 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 all that right but then there comes a time when i'm like I really think it ought to go like this. And you're like, doo -doo 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 and they're like, oh, I really like that. And you're like, oh, okay, if you like that, well, then I think we ought to do it here and we should do this something here. So now you're changing the dynamic, but does that make you part of the writing team? I guess, the, I guess it depends on who, whose song it was originally. Yeah. It's like Dave Hope in uh, Kansas. Some guys are like, sure, we'll put your name on it. And I guess others are probably like, Nope. No, nope, 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 nope. Don't yeah. So. so, you know, uh, some people, you know, and, and the, the hard part is ultimately, I ultimately, I hate the fact that people would have their name on something that they didn't contribute to the writing ultimately. But I do understand that there's a business line to it, to where having your name on it, is going to make them more money. Kind of like an autograph where people charge for money. Well, you know how much more that's going to be worth? Do you know how much more my guitar is worth now that I've got all those autographs on it that I had on the pizza show? Huh. But I'll, I'm never going to get rid of it. I mean, that's not, that's not why I have it. Uh, you know, and sometimes you have your name on it to Stuart. So, Unless it goes to some other steward, then, <laughs> you know, but what was interesting, uh, I, I got done with the, at the vet today with the pup and, uh, I did go by and pick up some of um, the stuff that I re requested and I showed you the, the film and then there's the soundtrack too. No, oh, nice. So it's really nice. Uh, there is how many songs? 18 songs. Oh, <laughs> and uh, also one thing I need to point out from last, was it last week? Yeah, Frank Domino was on and we did the interview uh, about Angel. There's, I think there's 17 songs on that new Angel record, not 14, 17. Wow. 
Yeah. Well so, fun. yeah, that's why I was like, uh, are you going to give us any more? Or did you just like shoot the wad on this one and that was it? And then how about this album, Jeff? How about this one? I checked this out from the library too, because what a moment this was. The Million Dollar Quartet. Uh, what is that? Johnny Cash, Jerry yep. Lee Lewis, yep. Elvis, and I can't make out the guy in the middle. Who's that? It is Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins. Yeah. Jerry um, Lee Lewis and Johnny Cash. There's a. Um, I was on this website and they had a video of uh, it's his rare film. It's Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Buddy Holly, and Johnny Cash backstage. Oh, jeez. <laughs> See, yeah. See, See, those... there, I mean, none of them were anything at that point, but it's like you're all legends. Yeah. You don't even know it. No. No, it's it's really crazy. Um, you know, again, I was just mentioning the the Nashville, um, uh, the Nashville show uh, when I went down for the Nam show, and there I am standing next to Les Paul. You wow! Know? You're just like, wow! You know, and it wasn't like I walked up on him. You know, I was just hanging out backstage, and he walked up and stood right next to me. I'm like, just tell him to hey. buzz off. Like, back up, buddy. Dude, space? There's room enough for all of us here. He's like, I'm Les Paul. I'm like, well, okay, we'll get into my space a little bit. What's up? <laughs> Jeez. All you had to do is say, Les Paul coming through. No. <laughs> there was a time uh, I was at a restaurant. I went to the bathroom. There was two <laughs> urinals, like, side by side. Yes. And I go to the bathroom. Some guy pulls up right next to me. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> And um, the guy, he, he came in, so I just kind of looked over at him. I was like, oh, my God, that's Jackie Smith, who he was a tight end for the St. Louis Cardinal football team. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a Hall of Famer. And I'm like, wow, I'm taking a piss right next to Jackie Smith at the same time. <laughs> Is this okay? <laughs> Is this a bad time to shake your hand? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> He's like better than shaking something else. <laughs> I'm trying to see if maybe I can find those uh, shots. If I remember right, they were kind of towards the front here. Because I kind of bumped into some uh, uh, pretty Elvis, quickly. Elvis got a Presidential Medal of Freedom Award in 2018. Why in the what? world would it take so long? Yeah, I don't know. That's, what, that's that award you get for doing something... That's the new military, you know, with the military. Just uh, as a citizen, you did something kind of uh, outstanding in your time. And I mean, of all people, Elvis. Well, yeah. Wait until have 2018. You, <laughs> have, did you ever see the movie uh, Elvis and Nixon? No, oh, I didn't see the movie. Oh, dude, you need to watch that. That's pretty good. I didn't know there was a movie, to be honest. I remember the yeah. photo. The photo yeah, was it's, great. It's like new. Uh, it came out in the last, you know, within the last, uh, I don't know, I'd say five years, but maybe maybe it's not last five years. But, um, yeah, it's I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it has the guy, well, for those of us who like fantasy films or superhero films, he, he was in Man of Steel. He played General Zod in Man of Steel, and he was... Uh, God, I don't know. He's done so many other so many other roles now too. So Nixon and Jackie Gleason are really good friends, and there's really? a, there's a story out there that Gleason, while visiting Nixon while he was still president, yeah, that, that um, Nixon was telling him and apparently even showed him something about aliens, oh. and that. Uh, uh, and the story goes that uh, uh, Jack Gleason was really freaked out about it because he, wow, because you know, he wasn't expecting that. So I wonder if uh, I wonder if Nixon said anything to Elvis. Wow. And um, that's it. Oh, he's coming. Not joining now. Okay, Elvis expert. Not joining now. 
That's what JD says. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a type. Was he coming or not? There we are. That's me and me. I keep forgetting to hold it like this. Me and Les Paul. Wow. Me with short. So what's what's the wow that I'm standing next to Les Paul or my hair's that short? <laughs> One of the two. You're on the left, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Fargan who. Ladies and gentlemen. John Dorrance. How are you guys doing? I want you to play us a solo right now. <laughs> the, solo, the solo for right now or a solo right now? <gasps> Ooh, you're being creative and snarky. I love it. Snarky, yes. Creative. Snarky. So so you, whether you know shit about Elvis or not, it looks like you belong on the show with that background. So that's what I have to say. And so, so I did have the story uh, that I passed on to you earlier, the uh, Springsteen connection, and and hence the Asbury Park Beach. Uh, uh -huh. All right, so it's got a theme, right? Right. So remember we were talking, and, and I owe this uh, factoid to Catherine, uh, and I've always liked this song, but I never knew. Yeah. Uh, were you aware uh, that Bruce Springsteen wrote a song originally for Elvis? And do you know what song that is? Did wait a minute? Did Elvis actually record it? Well, that's the kicker. That's the no, but we talked about this. I do know what one it is. Yes. What did he write for him? The sisters did it. The Pointer Sisters. Do you know what song that is, Jeff? The Pointer Sisters recorded it, and I don't remember the Pointer Sisters recording at all. I mean, I know the Springsteen one because I've seen them live. Right. They did. Oh. It, what was it like? Nineteen seventy-seven or? Yep. It was it was fire, yeah, fire. Hmm. Yeah, so that was really surprising to me. I never knew that. So so he wrote it for Elvis Presley, but Elvis died before he got to record it. Wow. And uh, so I don't know whether the the wheels were in motion for that or not, but uh, it's definitely right. an interesting little tidbit. And I believe the year before he actually, when he was in the area, he jumped the wall at Graceland. And there's like this big story on the <laughs> Graceland site. He was like that big of a fan. So I guess, you know, he's kind oh, of wow. seeing him in concert. And But uh, but how cool is that? Like, that's about it on my Elvis knowledge. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, JD. Sure uh, I'll see you guys next week. Week. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> JD, is that still the Michael Ute stick back there? Or is that someone else's? No, this is actually a Bob Mason stick. And... Uh, that he, he was a goalie for the Capitals. And I don't know if you remember the longest, I think it's still standing, the longest playoff game in history for overtime, the Easter Epic game against the Islanders, the Capitals versus the Islanders. And Bob Mason was the goalie. And he stopped, I can't remember the exact number of shots, some ungodly number of shots. We ended up losing. Pat LaFontaine scored the goal. But this is his stick, not from that game, but – he was pretty legendary. Pat LaFontaine from St. Louis. Pat, well, and and he was in New York. Yeah. So he was in uh, – he was playing for the Islanders when he scored that goal and ended our playoff run. But it was an exciting game, and uh, it, it went to the next day. It, it yeah. went overnight. So it was actually uh, pretty exciting. So that was the goalie. That's the history of that goalie stick. But that's, again, not, not from that game, but that was the goal. <laughs> and Elvis well, was there. And Elvis was there. <laughs> we, we saw him leave the building. He was on fire. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> who did, who wrote a song? I don't know what year was that. Uh, what metal? What metal uh, artist wrote a song for a hockey team? Has there been multiple ones, or is it just the one that I'm thinking? Metal artist for a hockey team. Well, I mean, there's been several bands that they had, like, for, like, NHL, you know, the highlight type things, like Green Day, mm -hmm. the song. Yeah. Um, a metal band. I know Neil Peart did the drums for Hockey Night in Canada, and there was this whole, like, really cool video. But I, what... Um, well, let me let me put it this way. they find, I finally heard it during the Blues playoffs. Uh, Gloria by Laura Branigan. There you go. That was totally a metal song before that. No, no, no. 
But you know, so, there is that guy out there, Leo, whatever his name is. He could do he could do a metal version of it. Oh yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about? That's great. He did yeah. a metal version of Dire Straits, Sultans yeah. of Swing. Fantastic. Um, it is really good. He's really good. Um, now, uh, Megadeth, uh, I finally heard Crush Em, which was in the movie Universal Soldier. Okay. Um, and that, he wrote that for uh, for a, for the uh, his favorite hockey team. I don't remember who it was. You know, I don't think I knew that. I, I mean, is yeah. he from... Mustaine's from LA, yes. Uh, well, he moved there. Well, let's see. Let's be good um, I, I'm not that familiar with him. I, yeah. I walked by him one time at NAM. Uh, yeah, I stopped the, and said hi. Uh, I, I did not. I, he was, I think he was about to perform or something. Um, mm -hmm. Now, uh, La Mesa, San Diego. Is that where? La it is? Mesa. Mesa. That's, okay. that's fun to say. San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I honestly was not aware he was a hockey fan. It doesn't surprise me. Uh, yeah. Does San Diego have a hockey team? No. Um, let me see. Where, where are the Golden Seals? Where are they located? Oh, San Francisco, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that was a little before my time. Because uh, I had when I was little, I had one of those big uh, – table hockey games with oh, the yeah. sticks, you know, you pull them back and forth. I love that. Yeah. And, me and too. on top of the marquee where you keep score, they yes. had a bunch of flags. And uh I think there was a Golden Seals. Or was it Oakland? I can't remember. Maybe it was okay. the Oakland team. But there were different flags because after I got older and I found it, I was like, who are these teams? Because there was uh, two or three flags there I didn't even recognize. Yeah. Oakland Seals I, I think are actually related. I think it, yeah, it was the same team, Oakland Seals and, and Golden Seals, and you're you are correct. It was it was the um, Bay Area. Yeah, it says uh, it was in the second Universal film. Uh, has become associated with sporting events and was heavily promoted by the World Championship Wrestling, but it was I thought he had said he wrote it for hockey, is what he was done, and and he said when they went to record it. I mean, that was not a good time for him yeah. personally, you know, with the drugs and whatnot. And he said that, uh, he goes, am I really going in to write a, to record a disco song? Here we go. I see. It's actually, you, you are correct. It was more recently. Well, NHL uh, Arizona Coyotes. The Coyotes. That surprises me. Uh, he's evidently, I didn't know Dave is a black belt as well. I don't know why that's mentioned in this article, but that's weird. It goes along with Elvis. Yeah. Just like Elvis. There you go. That's the time. So, but has Megadeth ever covered an Elvis song? Not yet. They've covered Alice Cooper. Yeah. But not Elvis. No more Mr. Nice guy. Wait. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. That was for, was for the uh, super. Wasn't that on the super Mario movie? Uh, it might have been. I thought it was on. It was a Wes Craven movie called like Shocker or something like that. Oh yeah, Shocker. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. I didn't see the movie, but I I had the record you know, for some reason. I think Megadeth had a song on the Mario soundtrack. Is that what it is? You're you're more well versed in Megadeth than I. Oh, a good. Mario movie coming out. Is it next year? Yeah. Hey, I like that my internet's working tonight. Very happy about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. There's no there's no stopping point. I spent about a half hour last night after the show talking to Spectrum again. Uh, it's been a disaster since we moved. Uh, Our final words to each other last night was, oh, why don't we just say goodbye now while it's still working? Yes. <laughs> I just realized uh, I have three Go Game Go logos in my rectangle. I th I'm sorry. You said wrecked, and I was like, I, "What's he going to say?" Do we think alike? I was going there too. I was going do not to say wrecked him. That dark place that you were. <laughs> I thought I saw you on the boat. I was waving. I'm like, I mean, "Is that JD?" I need another one, like right here. I don't feel like a T. <laughs> That's what I told her. 
Hey, uh, so speaking of, uh, so what, what do you guys what do you guys think about Elvis covers, like famous Elvis covers? So do you have like a favorite, um, like Cheap Trick or EV40? Um, I or I'm sure there's plenty of others. I think oh, John Lennon even covered a right um, when he did the. Uh... What's funny is, is Elvis covered everything. Everything Elvis did was a cover. Basically right. I'm trying to think of any Elvis covers I even remember hearing. Well, Cheap Trick, Don't Be Cruel. That They had a big hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they right. That live. They always, almost always play that live. And then there's UB40, Can't Help Falling in Love. Yeah. That was a big one. Those are the uh, two that come to mind. Heartbreak Hotel by John Cale. Really? Jailhouse Rock by the Jeff Beck Group in 69. <clears throat> really? By the yeah. way, Jailhouse. Now I need to look that one up. Uh, Jailhouse Rock helped me uh, get a trivia question right on, on a trivia night. We were There was a music category, and I was kind of sucking at it. But <laughs> they said in the Elvis song, uh, Jailhouse Rock, who played... Um, Oh no! Tenor the tenor saxophone, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "Oh, wait a minute!" And I was trying to sing the song in my head. So it was in the lyrics. Yeah, it was Spider Murphy. Spider Murphy played the tenor saxophone. Yeah. Wow! Like that was an interesting question. Let's see. That helped tough. me get one right there. Dude, that's tough. Uh, it says in 77, the Saints did Kissing Cousins. Uh, the Dead Kennedys in 1980 did Viva Las Vegas. Oh, I got to check that out. Oh, Suspicious wow. Minds was covered in 85 by Fine Young Cannibals. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Oh, That's wow. one I of my love favorite that Elvis song. Songs. I love that song. Uh, Marie's The Name, His Latest Flame, was done by the Smiths the next year. Uh, in the Ghetto was covered by Nona yeah, Hendrix in 87. And evidently Dolly Parton, if this list uh, is correct. Yeah. Oh, uh, and everybody knows everything on the internet is true. So Right. Always on My Mind was done by the Pet Shop Boys in 87. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Love Me Tender was done by The, Re the Residents in 89. Uh, Summer Kisses, Winter Tears by Julie Cruz in 91. Can't Help Falling in Love by Bono in 92. Really? I don't remember that. Now, well, here's one for you. Wooden Heart by Tom Petty in 95. Uh, uh, so John oh, Lennon did Hound Dog. Yes. Right, right, right. On his that rock and roll album, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, that that. Um, oh well. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll I'll, I'll wait. No, I was going to say. That, I mean, I, I I guess there's a third person that did in the ghetto, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Oh, really, really. They were on the uh, Batman Forever soundtrack, right? Uh, they could a, be. They had a song on that album. I remember. Didn't Prince have a song on that? No, that was the first one. He was oh. all over that. That was that was his deal. This is Jimi Hendrix did Blue Suede Shoes. Yes, wow. he did. That's correct. And here's one I didn't even know about. Paul McCartney covered That's All Right, which is one of my all-time favorite. I mean, I, I totally I totally can see that. I it's don't not remember on my, that by Paul McCartney. It's not on my CD though. You two covered Can't Help Falling in Love. Uh, uh -huh. so did Pearl Jam evidently live. So needless to say, he had a big impact on rock and roll still to this day. Yeah. There is a light. That was Nick Cave from Batman Forever soundtrack. Ah, good call. Yeah. The yeah. Dead Kennedys, Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. How I've about that? that? I want to hear that. Yeah. I'm gonna I, have to check. We're going to have to hear that. Oh. I got to check Pete. that out. Papa Pete with uh, Corey Hart cover here. Uh, can't help fall in love. Well, of course, he's got the Canadian edge. I didn't know that he covered that. It's interesting. What was what was the song that he did? He did a couple. 
I mean, what was the cover that he did? Oh, for who? For did did Corey Hart cover an Elvis tune? Yeah, can't, can't help falling in love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. Well, he did. You know. Um. You know, sunglasses at night, never surrender. There it is, Dead Kennedys, Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> wow. By the way, uh, just a slight tangent. Corey Hart, have you ever heard? There's a, a great guitar solo sort of towards the end of Sunglasses at Night, as I remember. Yeah. But I yeah. never, like when I listened to it, like as a kid, I wasn't thinking that. But, you know, I just hear it trailing off at the end. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. There's pretty, a lot of, lot of cool stuff. You know, a uh, band I've been getting into uh, <laughs> lately, too, is The Tangent. Uh, you'll have to check them out. Really, really cool stuff. The tangent is my life story. I go off on tangents constantly. <laughs> it should be a house band for our channel, sir. A band. Yeah, that is exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, the name's already taken. But Perfect. We'll, we'll have to add something that instead of the tangent, we'll just have to give it a an adjective. Something tangent. Warped tangent or something. Warped. Maybe uh, uh, maybe Duran's chant, Duran's tangent. <laughs> hey, this we'll just call it Durangent. There you go. This says that ZZ Top also covered Viva Las Vegas. Uh, uh, I I believe it. Wow, is there? I think I found a cover. Was that from a movie? I think I found a cover of Van Halen doing Heartbreak Hotel. Well, what what, what was the really? Yeah, 83. Eight, so with Dave. Yep. Wow. Let me see what Viva Las Vegas went gold for ZZ Top. How about that? I mean, I don't even remember that. You so, know what? I think I actually do now. I, I, I think I do remember ZZ Top. I, now, what was that movie that they did with uh, that had Kevin Costner in it where they were the the Elvis impersonator? Hmm. Oh, yeah, wait. Look at that. Van Halen, Heartbreak Hotel, live, 1983. Unplanned, unrehearsed. Wow. I need to I need to watch that. I mean, I don't know if it's just a slideshow video. I don't know. I no, it's seen live. I, I just clicked on it for a second. I didn't want to. Oh, it is. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, okay, I'm going to check that out. Hey, uh, I don't know if it's in the US Festival, but here's a question for you guitar players here from Born Distracted. Cosmetic thing, or does it do something different sound wise compared to other guitars? Uh, it's pretty cosmetic. It's, yeah, it's more the material. Yeah, it's more yeah. of that and the pickups. Yeah. But what about the guitar that's like just, it, it's just one big long rectangle. I got There's one. Some, I think Devo even used one of those. Hold that thought. You, uh, talking about the, why can't I say the name? Starts with an H. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a good guess. This is what you're talking about. Something like that. Who, Fine, me? Sir? Yeah, he's talking to you. Oh, no, no. It, it, the, um, I'm rewiring it. I just it's basically. Happen. Uh, what was that called? The neck? I don't even know. What, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the about. neck, the headstock. It's basically it. I've seen guitars where the, the neck kind of went all the way through to where you'd strum, and it was pretty much the same width. It may have gotten huh. a little fatter, but it was very similar. I mean, that's similar to this. Well, now what? What? Give me the. What's the brand? Well, so this is a this is like their lower end model, but this is a Steinberger Spirit. Steinberger, right? I think Gibson owned them for like a little period of time, and this was like the cheaper knockoff. But mm -hmm. I mean, again, this is like straight through essentially. Yeah. And then you have like a little bit of the wings on here, and it has no tuners up here. It's tuners down here. Tuners down there. Yep. This is a fun little guitar. I just have it as like a kind of bedroom or travel kind of thing. Uh, yeah, Bill Church used a Steinberger when he was playing uh, on that Montrose gig when he was on the Sammy tour. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, they're really cool. They're really cool. These are definitely cool. You can't like sit down playing with them very easily. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, but they, yeah, they definitely have their place. I mean, Randy Rhodes had the offset V. Um, right, right. Yeah. But, I mean, I think, I think material and, you know, whether it's like a bolt on neck or a neck through or something like that. And then pickups and then obviously I, the fingers play a large role. Yeah. And I, I will say this though, I will say this for, for born distracted though. It, it is an attitude. So oh. when you, you know, when you get an instrument, you're holding an instrument. If it, if it looks badass, I mean like, um, here, let me see if I can reach back here. I don't know if I can keep my headphones on. Oh, uh, oh, that's one heavy bitch. Oh, what's that? I don't know if I've seen that. So when you, like I designed this one. So, um, oh, wow. so yeah. if you design something or if it's really kick-ass looking and you're like, you know, you feel it, you get more of an energy off of it, that flying V is pretty bitching looking and you're like, you know, you're just all about it your playing can be different oh yeah i have a more aggressive style so I, I won't say i won't say the shape doesn't do anything not tone wise though not tone wise necessarily but yeah. sometimes it is there might be a little bit of a different tone in the way you play you might play one a little more aggressively because you just feel it and a lot of times those flying v's are wired and it's set up with pickups that are great for metal. Um, yeah. So you may change over to that, but that's where it does become the equipment that's on it. Um, so here's a picture of Bob Mothersbaugh from Devo. Yeah, yeah. That it's like a little, eh, it's probably maybe twice as wide, I guess, as the neck if you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's really, really funny looking. Yeah. That's probably a custom made something. You know, well, a lot of play, a lot of people played flying V's over time. I mean, like Buddy Guy, even and Jimi Hendrix, like they yeah. weren't known for it necessarily. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but like you wouldn't think you think it's a metal guitar, you know, you think Randy Rhodes or, or whoever, but you right. know, Michael Schenker. Michael Schenker. Yeah. That's who that's one of the people I always think of. What do you think Elvis would have thought of the metal scene if he were alive for it? Well, I mean, let's face it, he was around for a lot of it, but the unfortunate part is he was he was away from that. I mean, he was in such a world of his own. Um but I think I think there's a lot of his um energy and a lot of his passion that's that's in that area. Um we talked about but, that too, exactly. Yeah, frontmen specifically. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. David Lee Ross, Steven Tyler, Jim Dandy. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, even well, even uh, Joe Cocker. You know. Yeah, I think just anything you know, he brought that, um, kind of that sexy attitude. You know, frontman kind of thing. It wasn't just somebody singing. You know, right. like Buddy Holly, you didn't you didn't have that same kind of like great front man. And, and, you know, honestly, I mean, Buddy Holly, I think, played a large role in, in rock and roll, too, obviously. I mean, mm -hmm. and then the, absolutely you know, front man kind of thing. He's my favorite, J.D. But but Elvis. <laughs> watch it. Well, well, no, but, excuse, but Elvis had this. You watch it, J.D. <laughs> Elvis had this different kind of like sex appeal, though. You know, like, and it was just it was a different oh. it was a different vibe. And Dude. it was. And yeah. It was, you said it wasn't Elvis wasn't necessarily about writing the music and he wasn't I mean he was a performer but was look he, at that he played a guitar but was he a guitar player they had a guitar player I mean you know, that you know he was he was, yeah. he, he was all about performing I mean yeah. who, who could outperform Elvis but, yeah but stage show like that whole stage show like would it have been the same without Elvis no I don't think so and I'm like, not you know the biggest Elvis fan by any means but like uh, See the impact. Right. right. It's the reason I had to get this shirt. Because I mean, look at this picture. This guy is like smoldering. I mean, anything he did on that show that night. And then to, yeah. to do to have to go from that to that completely white suit and sing right. that track that he did. I mean, you know, it was basically his version of my way. Um sure. 
And it was just, I mean, the dude was, the dude smoldered, man. Everything from this gold lame suit to back in the day. There's, there you go, Jeff. That's yeah. back when he was just doing these quick shows out and about when yeah. he was really yeah. young. He had the image. He had the rock and roll image. And when you look at this, you know exactly who that is. <laughs> you know? You know exactly who that is. <laughs> you know? I mean, you make it on a postage stamp for crying out loud. That's true. You know? Um, and then you got that. Mm. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's... it. I, he had it. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's – Kurt Russell was a lot like that too. I mean, that's why when he played Elvis, it was so crazy. I, I got to see that. Now, like I was questioning that, and I and I told Catherine about that right, right after you told me about that. And she's like, yeah, yeah. I didn't see him doing that. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't see him playing Herb Brooks either, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, kind of pulled it off, but, I mean, it, it was good. That's so yeah. right, Herb Brooks to Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. And then right after that, he played Snake Plissken. Thought you were dead. What's that? Snake Plissken. I thought you were dead. I thought you were. See, same thing. Yeah. Thought you were dead. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can find some uh, images of him uh, playing it. Yeah. There's a bunch. Oh, shoot. Yeah, man. Oh, this scene? Papa Pete, he had oh the cardboard stand-up of Elvis in that gold suit. Or his sister had a life-size cardboard stand-up of Elvis. That's great. I thought Papa Pete should have that in his room. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this was one of the craziest. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine having this, uh, uh, having this moment. Um, you know, you're you're giving it all away here. This is a scene in the movie when uh, when he goes to Nashville, and uh, the colonel's there. The colonel's already got him under his wing, and um, and they show up, and he plays a whole song. Um, and here, let me get it to it here. This is what he looks like. There's Kurt Russell as Elvis. Wow. Yeah. Um, and when we got done with the movie the other day, when I got done, I was like, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm hoping to maybe have Kurt on the show one day. Um, right. We we're talking about that. He seems super cool. Yeah. And I'd really love to, to ask him about, you know, what, um, you know, what, what were they trying to show in this movie? Because Charlie, uh, what's Charlie's last name? That was his right hand man. Um, he was actually, he's actually in the movie. He plays himself. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So, uh, so it's pretty, pretty freaking interesting, but you know, it's just, a, it shows a lot of emotion. Kurt did a great job with the emotions, uh, in this film. He, uh, uh, you know, he just, he, he kind of showed that side of Elvis that you could see, um, in reality, where he's like a mama's boy, kind of, um, you know, and and uh, and he put a lot. Uh, his relationship with his mother meant a ton, and as soon as she was gone, that's, you know, then it was kind of he was like a fair game, you know, he could do whatever he wanted. After that, sure, you know, it's was, it was kind of sad. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but, uh, but oh, anyway, you, you know, looking at that picture that you mm -hmm. had, that sneer that yeah, this had. Did you ever notice? I mean, it, it's I guess it's fairly obvious. Billy Idol, I think. Oh, totally. A, oh, yeah. Huge influence. And it's funny because he was more from like yeah. the punk scene. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but but he obviously you know is of the age that was you know directly influenced by him. But yeah, you see it in the in the visuals. And, you know, I guess you can probably hear it in his music, too. I mean, just, you know, lyrically. I mean, not lyrically, um, melodically. Yes. Um, he's yes. A very melodic singer for, for the music that, he, that it is, you know? Yeah. And he really took, uh, he took those, 
uh, songs to someplace else, you know? So I do get it. You know, I get, I get how he became so big as a performer. And I think that's important. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm going to mute myself for just a second. Sure. La, 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 la. Mm. Hey, Pete, does Coco like Elvis? That's a good question. <laughs> What's going on, JD? Here we go. Oh, so so Gino, Gino is here with me on the phone. Now, much like last time, right, Gino? Yeah, yeah, we can. Can you can hear him, right? Can you hear him on there? A little bit. Yeah. All right. I just can't hear them. Got it. Oh, there we right. go. Yeah, so, yeah. there we go. So, see, I'm always a challenge for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gino just wants to know if I can actually make it happen whenever he gives me a call. Can he do this? <laughs> actually, this time it's better because my son bought me this awesome microphone. I got a blue Yeti microphone now, and the phone sounds just fine through it. So, Excellent. oh, very good. Yeah. So, what's your biggest Elvis memory? Well, of course, my biggest memory is going to be, and it's sad, but the day he died, I can tell you mm -hmm. exactly where I was, and I can tell you where my mother was and my sister. Wow. And if you'd like me to, I'll do it real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, my mother, because back in that day, uh, we were able to, two blocks down, we had a meat market. Okay. And she had sent me down to get a pound of hamburger. Ooh. I was on my way back, and my sister came skipping down the Ooh. sidewalk towards me. She was a Beatles fan uh -huh. and a big Elton John fan, but she came with a big smile on her face, and she said, Elvis is dead. Whoa! And I looked at her and I said, you're a liar. You're a liar. And of course, I went running home and uh, I walked into our kitchen because we had a side door going straight into the kitchen. Yeah. And my mother was standing at the sink bawling. She oh. was washing dishes. Mm. And of course, I walked into the big room. And at that time, we had the tube TVs, of course. And uh, sure enough, there it was. And it was devastating, absolutely devastating. Wow. Because oh, he was, uh, uh, you know, as we said on, on the last time you and I spoke, Yeah. Elvis is the man who got me into music. It was uh, as a very young age when I saw Elvis, I was just like, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. Jeez. Mm. Wow. But that uh, sorry to be such a downer, everybody. But yeah, that was a <laughs> story. <laughs> actually, it's I mean, no, was a major, major yeah. memory to me, and yeah. I'll never forget that day. Yeah, because I, I, you know, dude, I don't, uh, I love it uh, to to the fact that it's it interesting to hear that because I don't know that I've ever heard of anybody telling me where they were, what they were doing when that hit. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, it was it was huge to me. I mean, uh, even at let's see, I was uh, I was very young then. Wow, I would have been. Yeah, well, see, he died seventy eight, seventy seven, seventy seven. Yeah. Uh, I would have been thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. thirteen, and I had been. Yeah, sent me too. To get us. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Shoot. And of course, I didn't believe it. Still don't. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's, uh, I think it was all a farce. Him and Michael Jackson are sitting somewhere and uh, ah. having a few brewski. <laughs> <laughs> and a and a <laughs> too, right? Yeah, right. I wish I could hear the others. I wish I could hear the others. Yeah, he was saying, he was saying like Morrison, too. Yeah. Yeah, they'd all be hanging. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt get them in a room and have that as the million dollar quartet. Huh. See, and I'm going to have to, I can't wait to listen to 
uh, go over all the trivia you guys may have touched on today. And again, I apologize that I was not able to uh, pop in earlier. Yeah. Well, now here's a question you can help us with. Uh, sure. Born, Born Distracted is asking, which actor did the best job playing Elvis? Now, I just sent Jeff this morning. Did you get a chance to watch that, Jeff? Andy Kaufman. Oh, no. On, on a Dick Van Dyke Christmas special. No. And he ended up doing an Elvis impersonation on there. Yes. He also he also did it on Saturday Night Live. Yes. And that was something that Andy was, uh, I'd have to say, very, very good at. And I, I, I would have to agree with him. It's, uh, he did a hell of an, an Elvis. Man. He did. He did. JD, what were you going to say? Oh, no. I, I, I was surprised by that. It, however... We just saw recently Man on the Moon, and and oh, I yeah. actually how it kind of started out. He was doing those kind of Elvis impersonations. Yeah, I need to see Man on the Moon again. I need to watch that. That was a good movie. Good movie. Great. Andy Kaufman, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Andy. It, it was it was great because he had his whole his whole shtick, you know, with the I thank you very much. You know, he had all of that going on <laughs> except for that Elvis part. Even when he did other. He did his shtick where he did the impersonations, but it was all like that, you know. Oh, it's right. a, you know, and then he gets to Elvis, and he's just all of a sudden he's Elvis, you know. So is that really cool? <laughs> <laughs> and did you watch the movie? I was just talking about the movie with Kurt Russell. Did you watch that? The one with Kurt Russell? Yeah, I saw that when it came out. Yeah, yeah, I just watched it the other day, and it had nothing. You guys, I do want you to know this too. This is another reason why I mentioned this is because it had nothing in it about his drug use. There was nothing in it about that. It was all just very much the the only thing that was that that was over the top about Elvis that they showed in that movie was him wielding a gun and firing everybody. Right? Yeah. Right. Shot a TV and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, he shot a number of TVs, especially in the hotel rooms. Yes, yes, but that's rock and roll. Like I that mean, is. Got, JD says that's that. rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, uh, if, if you got time, I've got two quick stories for you. Yeah, go for it, man. We got time. We got time. Okay. Um, so, anyone who knows who uh, Her Herschel Yanovich is, he is the guitar player for Chris Isaac. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, he. Uh, not only that, he's a huge Elvis fan, and he knew that I was a very big Elvis fan. And I show up at my house. I had not met him yet. I'm at my mother's house. I came downstairs for breakfast, and this guy comes through the front door, sits down, and says, Mom, what are we having for breakfast? And I'm looking at this guy going, who the hell are you? <laughs> and uh, he goes, who are you? I go, I'm her son, Gino. And he goes, I'm Herschel Yadovich. He goes, what do you do? I go, I play bass for Gio. And he goes, you play bass? I go, yeah. And he goes, uh, well, I play guitar for Chris Isaac. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we became fast friends. And uh, Herschel was playing in Tennessee. And he gives me a phone call. And he goes, you'll never guess where I am. And I go, where are you? He goes, in Tennessee. And I'm uh, at the club playing pool with Lisa Marie and Priscilla. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had come out and they had seen their show. And uh, they went back to the club. Um, it's over in Memphis. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to be able to tell you the name of it right now. Wow. And uh, sure enough, gave me a phone call and let me talk to Priscilla and let me talk to Lisa Marie. Wow. That's great. What a great it show. was, uh, I mean, so... You know, I mean, it's like I said, things like that are very big to me. I mean, right. Lisa Marie, she was just a little baby, and I swore I was going to marry that girl. Yeah, that's what that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. She, yeah, well, I'm pretty glad that didn't happen because I really love my wife. Yeah, right. And I'm just saying that to make sure my wife hears this. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good not to just bring home the bacon, but to save the bacon. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what was your, what, do you have another story too? I do. Yeah. Every time, uh, of course, every time I get over to Memphis, I uh, got to go pay homage. Yeah. Graceland. Yeah. 
And every time that I go, I make certain because uh, one thing that's always been there are the trees out front. Yeah. And they drop they drop these. Uh, they're not pine cones, but they're uh, they're almost like a spore kind of thing. And every time I'm there. I always pick one up off the grounds and I take that home as my souvenir. So I've got about, uh, probably about 12 of them now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're the same things that are in my backyard right now. <laughs> they may be. Yeah, they're kind of long and they're green and they're, you know, it looks and like. they look like they have seeds on the side yes. and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's them. Yeah. Oh, that's a trip. <laughs> well, see, so if you come visit me. You could take one of those home as your souvenir. Oh, there you go. You got to keep them separated. But <laughs> Good song, by the way. I know, keep right? I love it. Right. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> that would have been in the lightning round tonight. Which 90s song do you wish you would have written? <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. I'll make sure that I label it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> uh, uh, my Stuart and my Elvis. My Stuart <laughs> and my Elvis. <laughs> Because we are a lot alike. I mean, you know, you could get us, I, I, you know, I have that kind of smolder too. I No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. So what was your favorite, what was your favorite era of Elvis, Gino? Uh, would have been, of course, uh, his comeback tour and, uh, of course, the Hawaii concert. But I thought he was looking his best at the Hawaii concert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, being that he ended up with the same liver disease that his mother had, the medication began to take its toll. Yeah. And thus was the gain in weight. And he was very, uh, he was very worried about that. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have talked about this, but he, if you've ever seen the movie A Star is Born with yeah. Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Yeah. That part was originally offered to Elvis Presley, and he turned it down because wow. of his weight. Wow, really? Because of his weight? Wow. Yeah, it could have been a complete different, or uh, could have changed his whole acting career. No but doubt. yeah, sure enough, and it went to Chris Christopherson. Yeah, I just actually just got that in the mail recently. I finally purchased it. Uh, it's actually pretty good. It is really good. It's really, and you know, the very, the very first Star is Born is really good. Now, see, I don't think I've seen the first one. Oh, you I've need seen to, the, the last one, of course. Yeah, but. the actor that was in there. I, I, I challenge both of you guys, uh, to JD and Jeff, to, to uh, check that first one out because, especially Jeff, uh, you know, because of what I know we like, you know, together and the certain things you've said about movies. There's the the lead male in that role in that movie is so he's so clever when he delivers his lines for, for the time frame and how long, you know, films had been being made at that time. Uh, you don't always catch clever actors, but this guy delivered his lines so well. It was just it's just clever is the best word I can say for the guy. But yeah, check out that first Star is Born. What what year was that? That was oh okay. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, okay, there's there's four of them. I mean, you can get back to me on that because I want to go ahead and. I think there's like. I want to go ahead and watch that. Isn't there five? I thought there were five. Yeah, there's there's even another one with Judy Garland and James Mason. Are there? Yeah, yeah. I saw that one. one. First one was in '37, then '54, then '77, '37, '54, '76, and then this new one. But there's another one though. When's the Garland one? 54. That was the 50s one. Huh. Okay, but wasn't there one in between the first one and that one? I don't know. That I, don't know. Know. I mean, uh... Okay, so there's Janet Gaynor and Frederick March uh, is the one from 36, right? Is that right? 37. Yeah. 37, I mean. 37. Yeah, so close. Okay. So, uh, so check that one out because it's really That's that actor is that really I should good. check out. Okay. Yeah. Frederick March, that must be him. Uh, all right. I wasn't really yeah, expecting to think down. much of it. I was like, yeah, it'll be all right. And I'm like, this guy's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I watched the one with uh, Christopherson recently, and I'm like, yeah, I got to buy it. Plus, it had that cool logo that reminds me of uh, 
Smokey and the Bandit. It's like that <laughs> same that same kind of font. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, and I, I apologize, but who do you have on the line with you? And I wish I could see you guys. I wish I could be talking to you right now. Yeah, it's my uh, it's my buddy Jeff who does Go Game Go with me. We do the Go Game Go together. Uh, Very cool. Nice to meet you, Jeff. He's the he's I the other you. reason that we're doing this right now and talking because uh, Jeff and I started this channel together and. Uh, then we moved. I asked him, what about this hammer away thing? He's like, I like it. Let's do it. So, and then Perfect. JD, who is John Duran's from out in Washington, D.C., is with us. Ah, yeah. Hello, John. How are you? Yeah. He says, hello. Well, you know that. He says, John says hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. This is great. You have a lot of great insight uh, to the Elvis. Uh, yeah. He's of- loving your insight. That's great. for sure. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And, it, you know, and I, I hate. Uh, we got to figure this thing out because every time I, so far the two times that I've worked with you, I don't know if it's my phone. I mean, I need to get to a computer and I just wasn't able to get home yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, this is great. It's good to have you, man. I'm glad you hopped on when you had a chance. That's great. So, um, but yeah, you're it's still planning to come down in August, right? I would love to. Yes. Okay. If you're heading that way, cause we've, We've got room. I, I just need the dates. We've okay. got everything. We'll have you taken care of. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, I think I'm I'm going to try to make it to Nashville. they got this rockin' pod going on in Nashville. I, yeah, I think Ron's at it. I wouldn't doubt it. I'm sure he probably is. You know, that's another good reason for us to go. Um, when is that? Yeah, that's... It's okay, the first I'll weekend. The dates because I'm pretty sure he's going to be there. Yeah, it's the first weekend of August. Oh. I'll be at Lake Cumberland. Oh, well, there you go. Well, I'm there. Well, wait, I'm in Lake Cumberland, first, second, and third. Oh, August. then you'll be. No, so you're good. Because I think be it's back. like okay, this. Cool. I think it's like the sixth and the, the sixth. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the second. Hold on. Uh, Well, Sunday hmm. is the first. So you're going to be there. So Sunday of, uh, Sunday is the first of August. So then it's that next weekend. It's the, I think it's, maybe it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, because I guess it's only a three and a half hour drive from my house. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It's, that's about yeah. a buck and a half less than it is for me. Maybe we'll pop on over there to Rock and Pod and then you can head on out here after that. <laughs> be, I'd love to, but I got a gig. I got a gig on Sunday. No. Well, there you have it. Maybe I'll meet you in, uh, in Nashville then. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. That's where we met the first time. That is true. All the way yeah. back in 2004 in the St. Louis Music uh, booth. Yeah, we were just young dudes. Yeah, we were just kids. In our in our 30s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 2004. Yeah, yeah, I was just showing the picture. 30s. Uh, Man, that's such a long yeah. time ago for us. All yeah, of, thir- I guess. yeah, all of us. 30s is a long time ago. Oh, yeah. For every one of also, us. And I'm sure you've been online, so therefore, I don't know that you've mentioned this tonight. But, yeah, go for uh, it. Have you, have you talked about Jeff LeVar tonight? Yeah, I did, dude. Earlier, that's, yeah, earlier. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to recap. No, course, it's, uh, it's okay. Put out our... Yeah, I mean, what, what did you meet up with Jeff a lot or? Uh, Jeff and I, yeah, well, we played with, of course, Cinderella numerous times and uh, the best time was out in uh, Atlantic City, okay. which the club we were at, it wasn't a club, it was actually an amphitheater, but the amphitheater that was there is no longer there because of the uh, that hurricane that came through, wiped oh. everything out, including wow. the hotels. Wow. But. Um, where my wife and I met Jeff, uh, that we got to really actually know him was when he was with the naked beggars. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. With Inga and, uh, Eric. Eric. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it came kind of as a shock, not expecting that at all. Yeah. Of course, we still, uh, don't know any of the circumstances. Yet. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, those will come out as they will, but. You know, I see and I understand his son wanted people to post stuff. And I see a lot of people that post pictures and everything. Yeah. 
uh, with him. And I myself probably will not do that. I will reach out uh, via messenger, of course, and keep right. condolences personally with him. Yeah, if if I could do that, I would. Uh, my only chance is, uh, you know, here on the show, and in order to do that, you know, I I did post some uh, photos that we took with him. Uh, we were Very good. Christine and I were fortunate enough to meet him on the Cinderella tour with Winger and the Bullet Boys on that back oh, in '89. Nice. Yeah. And then, like you said, he came through here. Uh, with Eric and the band as beg as naked beggars and played down uh, south of us, and I went down and hung out with them and bought both of their first CDs and they there signed them. And it was he's he was just a, such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. um, as many times as he was with me, he was always a very kind yeah. individual. Yeah, yeah, he, he will be uh, he'll be missed. I wish I could have you know had a chance to see him, have him on the show, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I was saying I today. His, he would have done it. Yeah. I mean, he's that kind of guy. Uh, yeah. You'd have put a phone call in and he'd have told you every story he could have. <laughs> yeah. I was awesome. saying earlier today that he had that energy, um, you know, uh, on stage. Like Jake E. Lee, I kind of think about him in the same way uh, as having that huge uh, energy on stage. They they almost had a ward with their guitars uh, on stage. Um, yeah, yeah. And stuff where they pull the body into them into themselves, pull that neck back. You know when they were doing certain chords, the way they would move, twist their hip, and and that same kind of thing I saw in Jakey e. Lee when I saw him uh, with Ozzy on the uh, Speak of the Devil tour. Well, and uh, Cinderella was definitely the quote kings of throwing their guitars oh yeah you know, flinging them around from the back yes the bar was able to do that like with ease you know yes yeah I, the, I, back, back in the day it was, was all real. it was all good yeah and he, he's gonna be missed man i mean that's you know yeah. it sucks because uh definitely now i don't ever see cinderella ever doing another cinderella show no 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 fortunately yeah, Great I mean, that's what's kind of interesting about tonight with JD joining us. He's the one that actually mentioned it to me right before our show last night. Oh, very good. So, um, so it was interesting. Uh, but, JD, did you have anything to say about Jeff? No, I didn't know him personally. I have a, I have a friend of mine that it was close friends with him. And yeah, heard a yeah, lot J of great stories. Always just great, great stories about him. Nothing but positive things. And yeah, J JD saying that he did, he has a friend of his who actually cut his hair and cut a lot of uh, hair of a lot of metalheads back in the day. Yep. Uh, and she was really tight with Jeff and uh, yeah. had just worked with him not long ago either, right? Oh, wow. just best yeah. friend hanging out just in Nashville. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm curious and I'm I'm scared to find out what the reason was. Um, right. You know. And I'm sure it's, uh, you know, you, you, you can't speculate. No. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, hoping for the best, but there is no best to the circumstance. I mean, uh, it right. is what it is. And like I said, he's going to be missed. So yeah. especially in the, uh, rock and roll, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's yeah. getting into like, like as a chef, right? Like, I mean, he kind of had a second lease on life. Anyway, see yeah. I'm done? I always pop in and then I take you away from your subject. What yeah, no, doing? it's okay. No, I mean, we we can actually wrap this up right here. This is perfect to come back around to Jeff uh, and do that. And that's good. And, and JD was mentioning something. Yes, he had done some chef work. Uh, and he was, I think he, he had started a pizza restaurant. Is that right? Oh, wow. With I'm his, sure. I saw some food pictures online, and I, I remember mm -hmm. hearing about it. Like, I, I don't think he was doing as much music, uh, in, yeah, Jay, more of that. But that, yeah, I don't know that for all, all the facts. Uh, well, because he had a solo album that yeah. came out. Yeah. Um, and what year was that? Do we know? I'm, I'm trying to remember what. Uh, I didn't get to. I, I saw it earlier, and I didn't see what the year was on it. Um, 
Let's see. The solo album, where is it? La, 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 la. One for the Road in 2014. So I'm eager to check that out. Yeah, um, I'll have to do it myself. I'll tell you the truth, I haven't heard it. Yeah, yeah. It's got a really cool cover. Uh, it's got like a live shot of him with a guitar, and he's kicking his head back, and his hand is going up like through his hair. And it's like a, a really cool, like he just hit a, a brutal note, you know, just slammed a chord and then threw his head back. I will have to, uh, I will have to look that up, yeah. look into it. Yeah. Stuart, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, that sounds again, great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for popping in, man. I appreciate it. And, and like I said, I wish I could have been on time and, and, uh, the others, thank you so much. I'm I'm glad that we got this chance to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, would would love to. And, again. Uh, we'll I will call again. you uh, either tomorrow or the next day. That sounds great, man. We'll talk, and then you know, there's a lot of stuff we didn't explore tonight on this Elvis show, so we can okay. do another one down the line, and we'll have you on, and we'll get it all done. That would be cool. I love the trivia. Awesome, buddy. Well, then uh, right, you man. and I'll talk some more, and we'll get it all figured out, and we'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, Stuart. Take care. Take care. Bye. Well, there you go. Very cool. Yeah. So that's great. I was hoping he was going to be able to make it in. I knew he had some great, a couple of yeah. great stories. But, but wow, remembering where you were and what was going on, and his sister was taunting him with it. Yeah, that's crazy. I wanted to hear more of that story <laughs> <laughs> from his sister. Right? Do you want to call his sister? Yeah. That's like, why was she so happy? I'll it, send her. It, I'll send her a link, and, and we'll get her on with Gino next time. But it, it's interesting, though, and, and generationally, when people pass, and obviously this past year or two is, was like particularly hard um, mm -hmm. you know, on a lot of levels. But you know, it was when you know my parents' generation. Um, you know the entertainers, but it was like the Kennedy thing. That that was like mm -hmm. that was the yep. big thing that everybody just kind of like focused on, like the world stopped, but. In the entertainment world, you know, losing Elvis, that that was a big thing. But you know, and and I hadn't really experienced a lot of that, like you know, my idols until you know Eddie Van Halen passing. You know, yeah. you, I I will always remember where I was at that time. I was in a meeting. Yeah. I was trying to keep my composure. Uh, you know, it was virtual. You know, we were at home. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but that's yeah, just you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about stuff like this. You hear about it. And then, like, when your idol passes, it's like, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Jeff, has there ever been somebody that's passed and that's like a celebrity that's really affected, that affected you where you're like almost, not necessarily that you remember what you were doing, but but it's pretty close to where you're just like, oh, man, wow. I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm sure there must have been. What about when the Three Stooges died? I was... uh I mean, you were too young for anything. Well, Curly yeah. died before I was born, and yeah, Larry okay, and right. both died when I was a little kid. I got you right. So there, so that. there's that, there's that situation. I right. do remember when they announced uh, Elvis dying, but I was nine. Mm. I knew exactly who Elvis was, but I didn't have any connection. Right. Oh yeah, Owen Hart. There you go. Tell us um, a little. It bothered when I heard about. Uh, David Von Erich dying in Japan. That was because uh, mm -hmm. he was such a great wrestler. I'm trying to That's think about any kind of uh, celebrities. Hmm. Mm. Can't think of any offhand. I mean, uh, there's. I mean, there's been there's been some oh, like to, like Phil Hartman. Ahead. Phil Hartman. Oh, Phil Hartman. That was yes, that was yes. Oh. That was just. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. Good call. Good call. I think, well, and, was, and, was, and, and previous, yeah. you know, obviously. But that, that was kind of like, well, you kind of saw that coming a little bit more. I mean, he was just, everything was in excess, you know, and he lived, he lived like a rock star, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I'm the same Phil way with um, Phil Hartman. Stunning. Like, I mean, that. That's what made yeah. the Hartman thing so terrible. It's like, it, it wasn't his doing. No. It didn't have to happen, no. yeah. No, yeah. yeah, it didn't have to happen at all. Right. Yeah. Wow. I just saw a video of Chris Farley actually in Washington, D.C., uh, being Newt Gingrich in front of Newt Gingrich. 
Yeah. Did you ever see that? I think I recall. Yeah, I have. That's good. And then at the end of it, he's like, uh, what, he's like, uh, yeah, just do me a favor. Go see Tommy boy. And, uh, <laughs> well, I think I, I was, yeah, I think I was telling you in Curb Your Enthusiasm, his brother was, was in yeah. an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm and yeah. oh my God, it looks exactly like him, you know, yeah. I mean, I had the whole mannerisms and stuff, but, uh, yeah, uh, Farley was such a talented guy. I mean, hey, JD, was, was his brother, in, was it the final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm or was it earlier? No, no it's not. Oh. Because we haven't even worked our way there yet. Somewhere midway. Um, I got to look it up. Wow, Are you watching a- he Are played, you watching that he on played Amazon? Like repair, I think he played like a repairman, like oh, okay. a cable guy or, or oh. a like repairman or something like that. I've seen all of them except for the last season. I would have seen wow. it. I lost track of it. I own some of it, but then how many seasons are there? Ten, I believe. Ten? Okay. Ke- Kevin Farley, uh, the rat dog, was the episode. So John, so hey. where what were you doing, Pete? John Belushi. Oh, yeah. The only okay, so the only person that I okay, wait. I think the the one person that really stands out is uh John Lennon because uh Howard Cosell told me. Because I was watching Monday Night Football and Howard Cosell told me that John Lennon died. And it's so. interesting. My appreciation for the Beatles has grown over time. Just being a musician, understanding the impact of the Beatles and their harmonies mm-hmm. and, and so on and so forth. And um, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I think back in the day, you know, I, I was sad about it. You know, obviously sad to hear about it. But but I think now looking back on it, and and I've had the fortune of getting to see Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but. Just think about like how amazing would that have been to see the Beatles, you know? Oh yeah, oh um, yeah. And you know, yeah. You're looking back on it, and that's another thing that just didn't have to happen, right? Um, I think it's I think it's amazing to talk with uh, folks like Frank Domino last week and uh, Graham Bonnet, people who did have contact with these concerts. You know, Frank talks about seeing the Beatles. Yeah. He, you know, I'm like, holy crap. You know, because he's just that much older than I am. I mean, I was born the year that they came here. Yeah, yeah. it is. So, it's, yeah, it's strange to think. You know, the, we're thinking back on it like those generations, but then we think about our generations and the people that are gone and the people that we did get to see. And right. you know, back on it, I mean, whether it was Boston with Brad Delp, um, I saw Emerson Lake and Powell with Cozy Powell before he. Oh, dude, died. you're kidding! Yeah, that was that touch and go. Cool. Yeah, I know. I love that record. I've got it. But yeah, just just things like that. Um, you know, obviously Van Halen. I've seen Rush dozens and dozens of times. Oh. You know, but well, you know, they played a song from that record. Uh, during the royal wedding, with uh, with Princess Di. Really, I wonder. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, I I have a feeling I know what it was. There was like a ballady kind of. No, actually, it was the score. Oh, really? Because it was so grandiose and yeah, so yeah. huge. Now I gotta. That's. I mean, I'm sure there's video of it. Yeah, you know, my mother-in-law watched soap operas, wow. and they played Aerosmith on one of them one time because they had that song called "The Movie" mm-hmm. on Permanent Vacation, mm-hmm. and they played it on one of these soaps. It, they were going to commercial. It's one of those where they have somebody stopping. They're like. And you're like, okay, nobody just sits there and stares at anybody that long. Can you move it along? Right. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, wait, that's freaking Aerosmith. That's great. Yeah. So what a weird tune to put on your record. And then it ends up in a soap opera. Yeah. But made money, 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 money. Who I can give you a future person that's going to bother me when they die. <laughs> and I only oh. say it because he's, he's, very old is uh Bob Newhart. Oh yeah. I oh, love yeah. Bob Newhart. Well, yeah. What about Doug Figer, yeah. dude? Yeah, I was thinking that too. That wouldn't really bother me because that was it, you know, no more Doug Figer music. Right. 
And I mean, he was That's... making music all the way up to the end there. And oh, wow. he died way too young too. Jeez. Yeah. I was, I was very fortunate to, to see him. This is going to be part of our, we'll, we'll talk about this again, JD, cause we're going to have our NAM show. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, next month. Okay. Uh, it'll be the latter part of the month. Um, but yeah, when I bumped into to him at the NAM show, I mean, it was me and Doug were talking, and there's Pat Torpy off to the side that who oh, was Pat. drumming for drumming for them at the time. Pat Torpy is another great loss. I know, I know. Uh, it's crazy. And then uh, Elliot Easton comes walking up from the cars, he and his daughter, and so here I am hanging out with Doug Figer and Elliot Easton. And uh, I, speaking of the cars and the knack. Yeah. There was a story where um, uh, back when the Knack hit it really big, you know, the cars have been around for a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. at the time, um, Rick Ocasek, uh, yeah, Rick Ocasek um, was getting kind of tired of seeing them because they were all over the place, <laughs> wherever they'd go. And so some of the other members of the cars, they got a uh, – they went to a uh, record store and they had like a stand, a big stand up, like life size of the neck, all four yeah. standing. There. And they went into Rick Ocasek's bedroom or uh, hotel room oh, no. and they slid them, they, oh. they put them on his bed and then put the covers over them because <laughs> their heads were showing just to piss them off when he walked in. <laughs> oh, what a, I've never heard that story before. That. <laughs> Oh, me either. But you know what that reminds me of, Jeff? It reminds me of when we were talking about having a Devo sleepover. That's what it reminds me of. I said, you could just see Devo in their red hats all laying with the covers all the way up to here. And they have their little fingers over the top. They're just all laying in a row. And two of the, two of the five members of Devo are gone. Yeah. 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 I never got. To, I would have liked to see them in concert. I never did get to see them in concert. Oh, I would agree. Yeah, I would. Me too. Me too. But among my biggest regrets, I think my two biggest regrets, I think, uh, one, and we talked about that previously, Les Paul. Um, mm -hmm. I had yeah. to take the Iridium to see him, and he passed like a, a month or two before. I mean, he had been ill. And then uh, Prince. I, yeah. It, like somehow that escaped me and I, I just, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm going to see him this time. I'm going to see him this time. And it just never happened. Right. Well, that's, that's why we were so adamant to hold on to our tickets for Elton John. Yeah. You know, cause that we could have, we could have skipped it and just gotten a refund, but we're like, nope, 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 yeah. nope, nope. Fantastic show. Elton John uh, saw him, uh, it was uh, what tour? it was the tour right before he and Billy Joel toured together. Oh wow! So yeah, that was a good time frame to see him. That, that was absolutely phenomenal. And oh, here's here's a, a more tangents, but uh, so <laughs> I, I'm listening. To, you mean derangents? Uh, I'm listening exactly. Derange <laughs> and a deranged tangent is basically. What see what I mean? Yeah. See? So um. I'm I'm uh, listening to Steve Luke at their audio book. Highly recommended. Uh, really, uh, Gospel According to Luke. And, yeah. You know, obviously he's played with everybody, but I I actually didn't know that Elton John initially asked him to be his guitar player. Wow. And he turned it down because you know Toto was you know becoming a thing. I, I think it was like right after um, Boss Gags, and uh, just some great stories and. Um, but he actually played on a bunch of Elton John albums. And, uh, you know, he told this story where Elton John called him. He happened to be in town and uh, they were having some kind of a party and he invited him over. And he was like, yeah, yeah come on over. Not thinking he was going to come. And yeah. he evidently he didn't tell his wife. So his like wife opens the door and it's like freaking Elton John huh. there, you know. And then he <laughs> proceeds to say, yeah. He and uh, Peter Frampton just hung out for the rest of the night. I'm like, whoa, what kind of party? That would have been a great party <laughs> to attend. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I was just trying to look and see. I thought I had those. I thought I had my Peter Frampton pictures here somewhere. Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, that's fantastic. There's me me with the mullet with wow. Peter Frampton. 
That looks like right after, was that around like the Sergeant Pepper era? Like uh, no, actually it was way past that. It was the, uh, when all the pieces fit back in like 1989. He still looks pretty young. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. A lot. And then he's signing, uh, well, there he is at the NAM show then many, obviously many years later. Wow. Why, why can't I do this correctly? There you go. Oh, wow. That's cool. He's still, uh, we saw him, I don't know, a couple of years back, two, three years back and just awesome show. That's what I heard. And then now he's not so well, right? No, he was doing his farewell tour. I think he said he's still going to make music as much as possible, but yeah, yeah. he's got a, a debilitating uh, disorder. Yes. Very, very sad. Um, but we, we had seen him right after he got his famous Les Paul back. And wow. uh, it, it was just this sordid story, um, you know, finally exchanged hands back to him. But it was really neat to get to see him play that live. Yeah. Uh, well, what I The footage I really enjoyed, and I think I've mentioned this before, but was uh, the footage that I saw with uh, Peter Frampton and uh, David Bowie walking around. I think they were walking around Borneo. I was just about to say David Bowie and Peter Frampton. Not that yeah. specifically, but... Because they went to the same school, of course. Yep, the art school. Uh, yes, and uh, and Frampton's dad was one of Bowie's teachers. What a great story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like yeah, the and, thing you hear about in L.A., but that was the British <laughs> version. Yeah, exactly. I, and I'll never forget checking out that video. And I, I sent it over to, to Toby Jepson over there in the UK. And he's like, and I said, ah, look at this a couple of school buddies hanging out. And he goes, wait, what? So I was like, yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. And he loves Bowie. He's one of his favorites. So yeah. I was, you know, it was all, you're always happy to, to tell somebody that loves something so much, a little tidbit of something they didn't know. You're like, yeah. oh, what? Like when Jeff told me, he told me stuff about the knack, and then I got to tell him when they were coming to town one time, and that was the time we had lunch or dinner with Burton afterwards. So, yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Well, we could wrap it up there, folks. Uh, thank you guys for hanging. I still got to know, I still got to know Pete's story about exactly where he was when yeah, John right Lucci is he still on? I would assume he is, but he's he's holding out. Unless either that or it's a very long story, and he's, he's still, still typing. <laughs> he's still drinking that giant beer. <laughs> I had a pretty. I had a tall boy last night. That those uh, sketchbook beers are tall. They're like a sixteen ouncer. That, I that love it. Beer he had was monumental. Was that real or was that? Uh... Well, he said it was real. Yeah. Was real. Wow. Yeah. You know, Pete. That's Pete lives in that area of Canada that's like Texas. It's all big. Yeah, there's a, the beers are bigger in Canada. The beers are bigger, <laughs> at least where beer. he is. Yeah. <laughs> all I know is if I get there and that beer is off that shelf, I'm going to be pissed. I came all the way up here and my beer is gone. He drank that months ago. It's just not the can store. <laughs> Props. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one, Jeff. That's a good one. Well, like I said earlier today, um, uh, the, finally, our uh, our last word this week on Jeff Labar. So sorry to see him go. And uh, prayers and condolences to everybody uh, near and dear to his, uh, to his life. And uh, he will be missed. Uh, next week starts kind of a, a rain of Tuesdays. Uh, because I've got an obligation through the rest of the summer uh, here in town that puts me away on Thursdays. So um, so I will be doing my shows on Tuesdays. This next week, I have two shows. I think I have, I have the one on Tuesday and I have one on Thursday. Um, so hang with me on Tuesday. We have these two young ladies, as I showed you before, the country duet called wildfire that's kelly and kayla and where are they uh, from sir they are from houston texas huh. yeah yeah and their dad oh, plays guitar texas. for them when they go oh, when wow. they're playing out yeah yeah and do yourself a favor again like uh if you're into that awesome awesome big rock sound that wonderful vocal steel city mach 2 is the brand new record with 
uh, with uh, Roy Cathy on it. First album was called Fortress. They are both stunning records. You will not miss out on either one. You can buy both CDs. I got two guitar picks today. So I got the guitar pick, uh, the two CDs, two T-shirts, and uh, multiple stickers. A little over 50 bucks for all of that. To have all the music they've got so far and a T-shirt for each. So, And check out Hybrid Ice. Uh, some amazing stuff from back in 82, 87, and 2009. Uh, check out those three records. You will not be disappointed. Uh, you can go to their website and pick them both up, pick all three of them up, which now I've got to go back to their website and buy the third one. And this is our cliffhanger for the night. From Papa Where was we'll Papa Pete? Week. We're going to have to find out next week. That's right. Next Wednesday, we'll find out, maybe. Next Wednesday, unless he jumps on my show on Tuesday. And then we can uh, we can do it, but yeah, jump in live and uh, give us some questions for these two young ladies. Uh, and like I say, I'm not a, I'm I've never been a country guy, but I do understand music, and music is not just what I listen to; it's what we all listen to. So I really thought this was going to be a a brilliant step in the right direction to include so many different kinds of music. Uh, so have a great rest of the night, Jeff. Thank you for being here on the show with me tonight. Always a pleasure. This is Jeff's third show this week. And JD, thank you so much for popping in, man. You had plenty to say. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And, uh, and to Gino, uh, thank you very much for popping in. And remember, folks, like we always say, when you step out your door in the morning, you're in everybody else's world. They are not in yours. So let's treat everybody cool, all right? Be fair, be cool. And we will see you guys on Tuesday night.